This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Sasuke Uchiha from Naruto Sasuke Uchiha is one of the last surviving members of Konohagakure's Uchiha clan. After his older brother Itachi slaughtered their clan, Sasuke made it his mission in life to avenge them by killing Itachi. He is added to Team 7 upon becoming a ninja, and through competition with his rival and best friend Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke starts developing his skills. Dissatisfied with his progress, he defects from Konoha so that he can acquire the strength needed to exact his revenge. His years of seeking vengeance and his actions that followed become increasingly demanding, irrational, and isolates him from others, leading him to be branded as an international criminal. After learning the truth of his brother's sacrifice, later proving instrumental in ending the Fourth Shinobi World War, and being happily redeemed by Naruto, Sasuke decides to return to Konoha and dedicate his life to help protect the village and its inhabitants, becoming referred to as the Supporting Kage. Welcome to the Yamagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Sasuke Uchiha. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Sasuke is the second and youngest son of Mikoto and Fugaku Uchiha. They named him after Sasuke Sarutobi in the hopes that he would someday be just as strong as Shinobi. Sasuke grew up in the shadow of his older brother Itachi, a natural prodigy who many in the Uchiha clan and the village would constantly compare Sasuke and any of his accomplishments to. Sasuke himself adored Itachi, never passing up an opportunity to spend time with him. Although Itachi welcomed his company, letting Sasuke watch him train and taking him on adventures into the forests, Itachi in return rarely helped Sasuke himself become a better shinobi. When asked, he would often instead poke Sasuke's forehead and promise to do it some other time. Sasuke found this annoying, but didn't allow it to blemish his high opinion of his brother. On entering the Konoha Ninja Academy, Sasuke proved to be the standout of his class, consistently getting top grades. However, he could never meet the same milestones Itachi had set, resulting in their father paying Sasuke little attention. Aware of this neglect, Itachi, despite being increasingly busy, tried to stand in for their father by giving Sasuke the recognition he craved at times even blackmailing Fugaku to spend time with Sasuke. As time went on, Itachi started becoming distant and cold towards their family, culminating in a falling out with much of the Uchiha clan on their suspicion that he'd killed his best friend, Shisui Uchiha. Sasuke did not understand the reason for this, but he didn't mind the side effect. His father began taking an interest in his development. Fugaku taught Sasuke how to perform the Great Fireball technique, which he mastered in a week. Fugaku stated his pride in Sasuke for this accomplishment, but at the same time encouraged him not to follow in Itachi's footsteps. After a long day of training, Sasuke returned home one night to find the streets littered with the bodies of the Uchiha. He rushed home to notify his family of this Uchiha clan massacre, only to find Itachi standing over the bodies of their parents. Sasuke tried to solicit help and comfort from Itachi, who responded by using Tsukiyomi on him to torment him with visions of him murdering their family. Horrified by what Itachi had done, Sasuke pleaded for an explanation, to which Itachi replied that it was to test his own power. Fearful that he would be next, Sasuke tried to run. Itachi cornered him and explained that Sasuke, as he then was, would not be worth killing. Only by becoming stronger, such as by acquiring his own Mangekyo Sharingan, could he prove a worthwhile challenge to Itachi's abilities. Before leaving, Itachi encouraged Sasuke to hate him, to desire revenge, and to gain power from that. Sasuke immediately followed through, pursuing Itachi and using his newly awakened Sharingan to attack him. The attack failed and Sasuke passed out, but not before glimpsing Itachi crying. Sasuke would forget this had happened for many years. Sasuke, now one of the last surviving Uchiha, was alone. He spent his first few days after the massacre wandering his family's compound, reflecting on the people who were now gone, killed by Itachi. Sasuke decided to do what Itachi had instructed and dedicated his life to vengeance, having no other interest than bringing about Itachi's death. He threw himself into his studies at the academy, making no efforts to form friendships and ignoring all the girls' attempts to gain his affection. One of his classmates, Naruto, disliked Sasuke's cool personality and the attention he received, and developed a one-sided rivalry in his pursuit to prove himself as good as, if not better than, Sasuke. For his part, Sasuke thought little of Naruto and was usually annoyed by his outbursts, but would at times secretly smile at how Naruto worked because of him. Ironically, for all the attention he received, Naruto was the only person among his peers who understood Sasuke due to the painful experiences he had. Prologue, Land of Waves Upon graduating from the academy, Sasuke is added to Team 7 under the leadership of Kakashi Hadake. Sasuke makes clear during their first meeting how little interest in the team he has, his only goal in life being to kill Itachi. 
One of his teammates, Sakura Harano, tries to bond with him by sharing her envy of their other teammate, Naruto Uzumaki's lack of parents, but this only offends Sasuke. To test their qualifications, Kakashi gives the three a bell test, stating that whichever of the three takes one of the two bells on his person will officially become a genin. Of the three, Sasuke comes closest to taking a bell, his skills being great enough to force Kakashi to stop reading his copy of Icha Icha. He ultimately fails, just like Naruto and Sakura. Kakashi explains that the goal of the test was to use teamwork, to do together what none of them could do by themselves. He's persuaded to allow them to try again after lunch, but instructs Sasuke and Sakura not to feed Naruto. They feed him anyway, needing him in top form if they're to work together. Kakashi sees this, and because they care more about the team than listening to his instructions, allows them all to pass. After a series of uneventful D-rank missions, Naruto is able to secure a C-rank mission for Team 7, escorting Tazuna to the Land of Waves. Soon after leaving Konoha, they are attacked by the Demon Brothers. Naruto is paralyzed with fear, forcing Sasuke to step in to disarm them and protect Tazuna until Kakashi can capture them. Tazuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him, but that he couldn't afford the bodyguard detail he needs. Although the mission is now A rank in nature, far beyond the skill of Genin, Team 7 decides to continue with it. For his earlier indecision, Sasuke declares Naruto a scaredy cat, also known as a bibirikun. When they arrive in the Land of Waves, however, they are confronted by Zabuza Momochi. Sasuke experiences a crisis of his own, overwhelmed by the battle between Kakashi and Zabuza. He quickly regains his composure, and when Kakashi is caught in a water prison, he teams up with Naruto to break him out. In the end, Zabuza is seemingly killed by Haku, allowing Team 7 to escort Tazuna back to his house. Kakashi finds Zabuza's death suspicious and decides to train the team in case he returns. He has them perform the tree climbing practice to improve their chakra control, which will help them against Zabuza. Although Sasuke's control is initially much better than Naruto's, Naruto improves rapidly using advice from Sakura, who herself mastered it from the start. Sasuke asks Naruto to share Sakura's advice with him, and from competition between them, they each climb to the top of their trees. Naruto is exhausted from the training, so Team 7 leaves him behind the next morning as they resume their escort duties. They're met by Zabuza and Haku, the latter of whom Sasuke faces in battle. Because of Sasuke's speed and refined chakra control, Haku imprisons him with his demonic mirroring ice crystals. Naruto joins to help, but unaware of how Haku's mirrors work, joins Sasuke within the prison. Sasuke is unable to melt the mirrors with his fire, and Naruto is unable to break free with his shadow clones, leaving them at the mercy of Haku's senbon. As time passes, however, Sasuke becomes increasingly able to dodge Haku's attacks, a benefit of his awakening Sharingan. Seeing this, Haku decides to finish off Naruto so he can focus on Sasuke. Sasuke shields Naruto from Haku's attack with his own body, when Naruto asks him why, Sasuke claims his body acted on its own. Sasuke seemingly dies from his injuries. In truth, Haku only struck Sasuke's vital points to put him in a temporary death-like state, so he wakes up a short time later. By the time he does, both Haku and Zabuza are dead, so their bodyguard services are no longer required. When their injuries heal, they return home via the newly constructed Great Naruto Bridge. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of unremarkable missions. For their performance in the Land of Waves, however, Kakashi decides to enter them in the Chunin exams taking place in Konoha. Because they've only recently graduated from the academy, the three feel they must give strong showings to prove themselves. When they arrive at the exam hall, Sasuke first uses his Sharingan to dispel a Genjutsu intended to discourage unqualified Genin, and then agrees to spar with Rock Lee. Lee's speed and Taijutsu skills impress Sasuke enough to use his Sharingan in their fight. Although he's able to see Lee's movements better, Sasuke can't physically keep up and Lee nearly performs the front lotus on him. Lee is stopped by his teacher, Might Guy, whose emotional method of punishing Lee disturbs Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura. During the exam's first stage, the participating Genin are given a written test. Sasuke is unable to answer any of the questions, causing him to realize that the purpose of the first stage is to cheat without getting caught. He therefore uses his Sharingan to mimic the pencil movements of other examinees. Team 7 continues to the second stage in the Forest of Death, where to pass they must obtain a pair of scrolls, one of which they're given at the start, the other of which they must take from another team. Soon after entering, Sasuke discovers that what appears to be Naruto is an Ame-nin, Oboro in disguise. He drives Oboro off and locates the real Naruto. To prevent this from happening again, Sasuke comes up with a complicated password that they'll share to confirm their identities in case they get separated. They're immediately attacked, and when they regroup, Naruto correctly recites the answer. Knowing Naruto could have never remembered the password, Sasuke attacks the imposter. The imposter, Orochimaru, is far too strong for them to contend with and may very well kill them. 
Sasuke tries to forfeit their scroll in exchange for their lives, but Naruto, upon locating them, stops him. Believing Sasuke may also be an enemy ninja in disguise because the Sasuke he knows would never surrender. Naruto engages Orochimaru in combat, defeats his snake, and calls Sasuke a scaredy cat before Orochimaru finally renders him unconscious. Amazed by Naruto's performance and encouraged by Sakura, Sasuke picks up where he left off by pinning Orochimaru down and attacking him with the dragon fire technique. Orochimaru is impressed by Sasuke and brands him with a cursed seal of heaven to reward him before leaving. The pain of the cursed seal overwhelms Sasuke and he passes out. When Sasuke regains consciousness, he finds Sakura badly injured, Rock Lee defeated in battle, and Team 10 defending them from Team Dosu, an Oto team. Sasuke questions Sakura on the identity of who hurt her, which Zaku Abumi takes credit for. Under the cursed seal's influence, Sasuke attacks Zaku and breaks both of his arms. He prepares to do the same to Zaku's teammates, but Sakura's pleas for him to stop bring him back to his senses and the cursed seal recedes. The Genin teams go their separate ways, and Team 7 spends several days recuperating from their ordeals. On the last day of the second stage, they go looking for the second scroll that they still need. They're found by Team Oboro, which Naruto distracts while the rest of Team 7 sneaks behind and knocks out. With two scrolls, Team 7 is able to advance to the preliminary round. Sasuke is paired against Yoroi Akado for the first match. Before the fight starts, Kakashi warns Sasuke that use of the Cursed Seal will disqualify him. Because he can't use Chakra without the Cursed Seal activating, Sasuke is forced to only use Taijutsu, something that proves difficult when Yoroi absorbs his Chakra whenever he gets close. Sasuke ends up mimicking the portion of Rock Lee's front lotus he saw a few days earlier, inventing the lion combo to defeat him. Afterwards, Kakashi takes Sasuke aside and uses the evil sealing method on his cursed seal so that it won't flare up as often. Sasuke loses consciousness from the application, and by the time he wakes up, the preliminaries are already over. For the final matches taking place in a month, Sasuke was to face Gara of Tsunagakure in the first round. In order to prepare him for this fight and to give him an alternative to the Cursed Seal's power, Kakashi teaches him how to use Chidori and helps him further emulate Lee's speed and fighting style. Their training runs long and Sasuke in fact arrives late for his match, but he finds that they waited for him because the audience has anticipated the fight so much. Sasuke uses his speed to attack Gara from multiple angles in a short time, leaving his shield of sand unable to block anything. Gara surrounds himself with his sand so that Sasuke won't bother him while he prepares for the fight. Unable to get through the shield with physical attacks, Sasuke pierces it with Chidori. Gara's arm is wounded and his shield dissolves, but not before Sasuke briefly senses Shukaku within him. Before the fight can continue, however, a genjutsu descends on the stadium. Konoha Crush The invasion of Konoha begins, forcing the cancellation of the Chunin exams. As Konoha Nin in the stadium start engaging the invading Suna and Oto forces, the exam proctor Genma Shiranui sends Sasuke after the escaping Gara. Konkuro attempts to delay Sasuke, but Shino Aburame appears to fight Konkuro in Sasuke's place. By the time Sasuke catches up with him, Gara is already in the process of transforming into Shukaku. Gara attacks with increased speed and strength, which Sasuke is only narrowly able to avoid. He counters with Chidori and succeeds in injuring Gara yet again, but Gara is still able to continue fighting. Sasuke, who has already reached his limit of using Chidori twice a day, is low on options. He's able to use a third Chidori by using his cursed seal, but is left paralyzed afterwards and at Gara's mercy. Sasuke is saved by the timely arrival of Naruto and Sakura, sent by Kakashi to provide assistance. Sakura is quickly captured and Naruto initially struggles against Gara. Sasuke volunteers to use what little strength he has to distract Gara while Naruto escapes with Sakura, but Naruto is unwilling to do so. Instead, Naruto taps into a mysterious chakra source, creates a thousand shadow clones, and soon after summons Gamabunta, each of which amazes Sasuke. Naruto ultimately defeats Gara, but he's not able to move. Sasuke collects him and takes him back to Konoha with Sakura. A few days later, Team 7 attends the third Hokage's funeral. Search for Tsunade Sasuke arrives at a dango shop to meet Kakashi for lunch. Not only does he find that Kakashi has arrived uncharacteristically early, but Kakashi abruptly cancels soon afterwards. When Sasuke stops by Kakashi's home later that day, he finds Kakashi is comatose. The assembled Jonin avoid divulging what happened to him until Alba Yamashiro unwittingly reveals that Itachi has returned to Konoha in search of Naruto. Sasuke immediately starts tracking Naruto down so that he can, in turn, fight Itachi. He stops by Ramanichiraku and is informed that Naruto has gone to Shukuba town with Jiraiya. Sasuke locates the inn where Naruto is staying shortly after Itachi does the same. Itachi allows Sasuke an opportunity to demonstrate how much stronger he's become, which he does by attacking with Chidori. Itachi easily blocks the attack and breaks Sasuke's arm, but he is stopped from going any further by the arrival of Jiraiya. When Jiraiya states his intention to defeat both Itachi and his partner Kisame Hoshigaki, Sasuke demands that Itachi be left for him. 
Uninterested, Itachi kicks Sasuke away and uses Tsukiyomi to force him to experience their parents' murders over and over again. Before Sasuke passes out, Itachi informs him that he is still weak. Sasuke is hospitalized, comatose at Kakashi before him. It isn't until Naruto brings Tsunade to Konoha that the trauma to their minds is healed. Land of Tea Escort Mission In the anime, Team 7 is sent to the Land of Tea to protect Idate Morino. During the mission, they are brought into conflict with Aoi Rokusho. Although Sasuke is able to help break Aoi's sword of the Thunder God with his Chidori, he is injured during the fight and must be hospitalized when they get back to Konoha. Sasuke Recovery Mission while recuperating, Sasuke reflects on his encounter with Itachi, along with Aoi's mocking in the anime, and is upset that after all this time, Itachi is still so much stronger than he is. He is also jealous of Naruto, who, despite being the worst student in their academy class, has seemingly surpassed Sasuke, evidenced by his defeat of Gara. Determined to prove himself superior, Sasuke challenges Naruto to a fight when he comes to visit him in the hospital. At first, Naruto refuses because Sasuke is still in no condition to fight, but Sasuke persists and Naruto agrees. The fight escalates quickly, culminating with Sasuke using Chidori and Naruto using Rasengan. Kakashi arrives and deflects their attacks into opposing water towers before they can clash. Sasuke initially believes his Chidori was at least stronger based on the damage to their respective water towers, but upon closer examination finds that Naruto's water tower is destroyed. Sasuke leaves, jealous of Naruto's development. Kakashi tracks Sasuke down afterwards and lectures him. The Chidori is supposed to be used to protect friends, not attack them. Kakashi reminds Sasuke that no matter how painful the losses of the past are, it would be worse to lose the friends he still has. Kakashi leaves him to think over what he said, and Sasuke becomes conflicted between his desire for revenge and his friendship with Naruto and Sakura. Before he can take Kakashi's words to heart, Sasuke is confronted by the Sound Four. Sent by Orochimaru, the Sound 4 fight with Sasuke to test his abilities and quickly defeat him. He tries using his Cursed Seal to gain the upper hand, but discovers that they each have Cursed Seals too. The Sound 4 offer to take him to Orochimaru so he can gain strength like theirs, which he'll never achieve if he remains in Konoha. Desperate to become stronger than Itachi, Sasuke decides to take the Sound 4 up on the offer and leaves during the night. As he approaches the village's exit, he is met by Sakura, who tries to persuade him to stay so as to not break up Team 7. When this doesn't work, Sakura confesses her love for him and asks to be allowed to accompany him at the very least. Sasuke refuses again, so she threatens to call for help. He stops her by knocking her out, but thanks her before he does. He meets the Sound 4 outside the village and they start guiding him to Orochimaru. Once they're far enough away from Konoha, the Sound 4 gives Sasuke some medication that will mature his curse seal to a second, stronger state. He's left unconscious while his body adjusts to the drug, but when he finally wakes up many hours later, his body is much stronger. Ecstatic, Sasuke continues on to Orochimaru by himself, paying little attention to the Sound 4's ongoing battle with the Sasuke recovery team. Sasuke is stopped at the Valley of the End by Naruto. Sasuke ignores his pleas to return to Konoha and is unmoved by Naruto's warnings that Orochimaru will take his body, believing that such a sacrifice is worthwhile if it will lead to Itachi's death. Naruto starts attacking him, ready to take him back to Konoha by force if necessary. Sasuke returns the attacks as a way of resuming the fight that Kakashi interrupted earlier. He also decides to kill Naruto, remembering Itachi's explanation that killing one's closest friend will awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan. With his cursed seal, Sasuke is able to land a number of serious blows. Although Naruto didn't want to believe that Sasuke would really kill him, his mounting injuries convince him otherwise and force him to call on the powers of the Nine Tails within him. Sasuke is surprised by the insidious chakra he senses, the sudden healing of Naruto's wounds, and the increases to his strength and speed. Sasuke becomes angry and asks Naruto why he would go so far for him, to which Naruto responds that Sasuke is like a brother to him and he simply can't let him go. Sasuke acknowledges their bond and promises to sever it, but does at least put on the forehead protector that until now he refused to, to do Naruto the courtesy of wearing. He boasts that Naruto will not even be able to scratch the forehead protector. They continue trading blows, with Naruto eventually manifesting a fox-shaped cloak, and Sasuke entering his Cursed Seal's second level. Sasuke clashes his Chidori with Naruto's Rasengan, and within the dome of resulting energy, they finally trade blows. Sasuke punches Naruto, and Naruto scratches Sasuke's forehead protector, proving his earlier boast wrong in the process. When the energy dissipates, Sasuke stands over an unconscious Naruto, wounded and with no energy left to finish him. He decides not to kill him since that's what Itachi would want him to do, and he refuses to let Itachi decide his actions. He leaves his forehead protector behind with Naruto and continues on to Orochimaru by himself. When he finally reaches Orochimaru's lair, he discovers that Orochimaru has already found a new body. 
Sasuke is unconcerned, only wanting whatever power Orochimaru can give him. In Naruto's footsteps, the friend's paths. In the anime, approximately two years into his training with Orochimaru, Sasuke volunteers to deliver some research material to one of Orochimaru's hideouts. While there, Sasuke releases one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Suigetsu Hozuki, from his confinements, and then helps Karin capture Suigetsu yet again. Pleased with what he witnesses of their abilities, Sasuke resolves to win them both over so he can have them as allies in the future. Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission Two and a half years after leaving Konoha, Sasuke waits impatiently at one of Orochimaru's hideouts in Kusagakure. When Orochimaru finally returns, Sasuke demands that he resume their training. Before complying, Orochimaru introduces him to Sai, his replacement in Team 7, but Sasuke isn't interested. Sai tries to engage Sasuke by discussing Naruto, prompting Sasuke to knock him over with killing intent. Sai persists, telling Sasuke that Naruto thinks of him as a brother. Sasuke replies that he only has one brother whom he will kill. Sai tracks him down later as he rests. Sasuke demands an explanation for the disturbance, and Sai reveals that he wishes to reunite Sasuke with Naruto so as to re-establish the brotherly bond they had. Annoyed, Sasuke attacks him. Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato, Kakashi's replacement, are attacked at the site of Sasuke's attack. Sai is unharmed and is prepared to help them bring him back to Konoha. Sasuke reacts with indifference to Sakura and Naruto, chastising the latter for still pursuing him after all these years. Sasuke also goes on to tell Naruto that he couldn't simply break their bond by killing him, and that he only spared Naruto's life from their first fight on a whim, but intends to kill him for real this time. To demonstrate that they mean nothing to him, Sasuke quickly neutralizes them all, his growth under Orochimaru being far greater than any of them expected. Naruto, frustrated by this, struggles to avoid the temptation of using Ninetales. Seeing this, Sasuke enters Naruto's subconscious using his Sharingan and suppresses the Ninetales, but not before the beast noted Sasuke's similarity to Madara Uchiha in terms of visual prowess and chakra. He escapes Yamato's attempt to capture him and prepares to kill them all, but is stopped by Orochimaru. Orochimaru points to their recent successes against Akatsuki, the organization that Itachi belongs to, and explains that letting them live may further weaken Akatsuki, thereby making it easier to kill Itachi. Sasuke accepts this reasoning, and they leave Team 7 behind. Three Tails Appearance In the anime, Sasuke meets one of Orochimaru's test subjects, Yukimaru, who is picking white camellias. Itachi Pursuit Mission after defeating hundreds of Otogakure forces in a training match without receiving a scratch and without killing his opponents, Sasuke decides there's nothing else he can learn from Orochimaru. He decides to kill Orochimaru before he goes, finding Orochimaru's pursuit of power for power's sake distastefully similar to Itachi. Because his current host body is in the process of rejecting him anyway, Orochimaru vacates it and attempts to take Sasuke's. Sasuke repels the attack and cuts up his body, but the exposure to fluids in Orochimaru's body paralyzes Sasuke, allowing Orochimaru to initiate the living corpse reincarnation. Orochimaru starts imprisoning Sasuke within his own subconscious, but Sasuke reverses the process with demonic illusion shackling stakes technique, imprisoning Orochimaru in Sasuke's subconscious instead. Before leaving the base, Sasuke releases Suigetsu Hozuki from the tank he was kept stored in and invites him to join a team he's forming. When Sasuke explains that he's dealt with Orochimaru, Suigetsu tests his abilities to make sure his victory wasn't a fluke, and satisfied, agrees to join him. They travel to another hideout to recruit Karin, and release the prisoners kept there so that she wouldn't have other commitments. Karin refuses to join their team, but claims that she happens to be going in the same direction as they are. They visit another hideout to recruit Jugo, the origin of Orochimaru's cursed seals. As they approach, they are confronted by a horde of escaped cursed seal recipients, but easily deal with them all. Although they locate Jugo easily enough in his cell, he's unwilling to go with them, afraid that he'll kill them in a violent rage. When Sasuke demonstrates that they can keep Jugo's rage under control, he agrees to go with them. Sasuke takes the others to Soraku to stock up on supplies, after which he explains that their team, called Hebi, has been assembled for the sole reason of finding and killing Itachi. They then split up to search for leads. While trying to pick up Itachi's trail, Sasuke is confronted by Tobi of Akatsuki, who distracts him while Daedra attacks above with his explosive clay. Sasuke summons a snake to shield the blast, and then immediately retaliates, seemingly cutting Tobi down, although he gets up unfazed. Daedra attacks with a volley of additional explosives, which Sasuke is able to deflect with his Chidori Senbon. Daedra takes to the air with a C2 dragon, and Tobi plants explosive mines underground, cutting off Sasuke's escape. Sasuke enters the second stage of his cursed seal, and by sacrificing his transformation's left wing, he is able to propel Daedra's dragon onto the minefield. Frustrated that Sasuke keeps defeating his explosives, Daedra uses C4 to cover the area in microscopic bombs that destroy anyone who inhales them from the inside out. Able to see the bombs of the Sharingan, Sasuke uses a Genjutsu to fake his death while he sneaks up behind Daedra. 
This is a trap as Deidara has trained himself to be immune to Genjutsu, and Sasuke is trapped in a sphere of C4 explosives. Having earlier noticed that the explosives can be diffused with Lightning Chakra, Sasuke escapes with Chidori and quarters Deidara. He starts asking for Itachi's whereabouts, deactivating his Sharingan since he thinks the battle is over. This insults Deidara, who uses his last result, C0. Deidara dies in the explosion, and Sasuke only narrowly avoids the same fate by summoning Manda and placing it under his control so Manda can jump to the Ryuchi Cave, thereby escaping the explosion. However, before Manda was de-summoned back to the Ryuchi Cave, they were hit by the explosion, which ultimately killed Manda. Manda uses his dying breath to curse Sasuke. Sasuke regroups with the rest of Hebi, and they locate a place to rest. After a few hours, Karin reports that Konoha Ninja are approaching their location. Assuming it's Naruto and the others, Sasuke takes Hebi to one of the nearby Akatsuki bases that Jugo learned about. Sasuke goes in by himself and finds Itachi waiting for him. Sasuke attacks and defeats Itachi with his Chidori Sharp Spear, impressing him enough to divulge where the real Itachi is before it, a crow clone, disperses. Sasuke leads Hebi towards Itachi's location. Faded Battle Between Brothers as they approach the Uchiha hideout where Itachi's waiting, Kisame Hoshigaki meets them and allows only Sasuke to proceed. Sasuke instructs Hebi to wait for him and goes on alone. When they finally are face to face, Sasuke and Itachi start by trading Genjutsu, within which they trade Taijutsu attacks. During a temporary lull, Sasuke questions Itachi about a suspicion he's long had, that someone had helped Itachi kill the Uchiha clan. Itachi confirms that he was helped by Madara Uchiha, one of Konoha's founders, but Sasuke doesn't believe him. While explaining Madara's history, Itachi also reveals that the use of the Mangekyo Sharingan eventually causes blindness, which can only be cured by taking the eyes of a sibling. Intending to take Sasuke's eyes for just this reason, Itachi uses Tsukiyomi on him, which Sasuke is able to break out of to Itachi's surprise. Sasuke and Itachi abandon Genjutsu and switch to Ninjutsu, the volley of attacks quickly spill outside where Sasuke and Itachi compare their great fireballs. When Sasuke starts to pull ahead, Itachi uses Amaterasu, igniting Sasuke and seemingly killing him. As Itachi approaches to take his eyes, Sasuke, having shed his skin to escape Amaterasu, attacks with multiple great dragon fire techniques. Itachi avoids them, but Sasuke informs him that Itachi wasn't his target. Storm clouds gather and lightning brews, allowing Sasuke to kill Itachi with Kirin. The hideout is destroyed, and Sasuke briefly believes he's won, only for Itachi to reveal that he has survived thanks to his Susanoo. Angry that Itachi could endure his strongest attack and having exhausted his own chakra reserve, Sasuke activates level 2 of his cursed seal. Orochimaru, sensing Sasuke's desperation, calls out to him from within his subconscious, promising to help him if Sasuke lets him out. Having exhausted all of his chakra reserves and having none left to suppress Orochimaru, he emerges from Sasuke's body, attacking Itachi with his eight branches technique. Itachi uses Susano to behead Orochimaru's jutsu, but he isn't concerned, having decided to take Sasuke's body while he's weak. Itachi stops him by stabbing him with the sword of Tatsuka, sealing him away and removing the cursed seal from Sasuke's body. Itachi approaches Sasuke, repeating his intention to take Sasuke's eyes, and Sasuke makes futile attempts to keep him away. Susano continues to protect Itachi, but it degrades as he labors near and Itachi starts coughing up blood. When he finally reaches Sasuke, Itachi appears to grab for his eyes, but instead only pokes his forehead. Itachi smiles, apologizes to Sasuke, and says this is the end before falling dead. Sasuke is confused about what has happened, but smiles for finally avenging his family before passing out. When Sasuke wakes up, he finds his injuries being treated by Tobi, who reintroduces himself as Madara Uchiha. When he sees Tobi's Sharingan, Sasuke's eyes suddenly use Amaterasu on him. Tobi escapes the flames and marvels at the lengths Itachi would go through to protect Sasuke. Sasuke doesn't understand this and accuses Tobi of lying to him, but Tobi insists that everything he says is true that Itachi killed the Uchiha clan on orders of Konoha's leadership in order to protect Sasuke. Sasuke is unable to process this and passes out again. When he wakes up, Tobi starts over, explaining the Uchiha's history, Konoha's history, and Itachi's history from the beginning. Sasuke tries pointing out how hard Itachi tried to kill him, to which Tobi replies that it was only to draw out Orochimaru so as to stop him from manipulating Sasuke any further. Sasuke starts recalling memories he blocked out, things Itachi said, and occurrences that make more sense with Tobi's version of events. Realizing how much Itachi loved him, Sasuke is overcome with grief. Naruto Jin Raiden, The Day the Wolf Howled In this novel, Sasuke starts experiencing eye irritation in the days after Itachi's death. Tobi gives him a bottle of Kotaro, a medicine that Itachi used to use. It helps, but very little of it remains. Hoping to get more and to verify parts of the story that Tobi told him, Sasuke goes to the Howling Wolf Village. 
There he meets Kina and Reishi Kodan, two brothers whose relationship is very similar to the one Sasuke used to have with Itachi when they were younger. They recognize Sasuke before he even introduces himself, having heard so much about him from Itachi that they feel as though they already know him. They explain that Itachi would visit them for a couple times every year to get another prescription of Kotaro, and that while waiting for it to be prepared, he would tell them warmly about his beloved little brother. Itachi also explained to them that if Sasuke ever stopped by, it would be because he had died. So they share their condolences. Sasuke is saddened by his confirmation that Itachi was a good person. Wishing to be alone, he places an order for more Kotaro before going off to rest in the same shack Itachi used to stay in. During the week it'll take the Kotaro to be made, Kina convinces Sasuke to help him investigate a series of murders that have been taking place in the area, hoping it will redeem their Kodan clan. During the course of the investigation, Sasuke discovers that Kina is behind the murders, killing villagers who pick on him by inadvertently releasing Rowan, a monster sealed within him. Every time this happens, Reishi wipes his memory so that he won't be traumatized by what he did. With the village starting to suspect that one of the brothers is responsible, Reishi asks Sasuke to help convince them that he is the murderer in order to spare Kina. Sasuke, again reminded of the relationship between Itachi and himself, agrees. Kina, however, doesn't want anything to happen to Reishi, and once again inadvertently releases Rowan and starts attacking the Howling Wolf village. Because of the nature of the seal containing Rowan, they now only have 10 minutes to perform another seal or Kina will die. Sasuke suggests a new seal concocted by Itachi before he died. Sasuke keeps Rowan busy with his Mangekyo Sharingan, it having finally awakened on coming to terms with Itachi's death. Reishi performs the seal, trapping Rowan in a nearby shrine at the cost of his life. Kina is saved and is given sole credit for stopping Reishi and saving the village, Sasuke having altered the villagers memories with Genjutsu. Kina, unable to remember anything, doubts this story is true, unwilling to believe Reishi was a murderer. Sasuke offers to take Kina with him and train him to be a ninja, but Kina refuses, wishing to stay in the Howling Wolf village to help people like Reishi did. As in the manga and anime, Sasuke gathers the members of Hebi with Tobi watching from nearby. Having finally accepted that Itachi was a good person who was wronged by Konoha, he decides that the new mission for their team, now renamed Taka, will be to destroy Konoha. Pain's Assault Tobi offers to help Taka destroy Konoha, but in exchange first asks that they help Akatsuki by going to Kumogakure to capture the Eight Tails. Sasuke agrees, but makes it clear he plans to kill only the elders involved in the massacre and the rest of the villagers will be spared. They track the Eight Tails Jinchuriki, Killer B, to the Valley of Clouds and Lightning and confront him. Sasuke and Suigetsu attack him with their swords, but he proves to be a better swordsman than they are and stabs Sasuke with several of his Super Vibrato Lightning Release Swords. After Kareen heals his injuries, Sasuke attacks B with Chidori, but it has little effect. B enters a version 1 form and attacks. Sasuke, recognizing it from his fight with Naruto, tries halting B with Genjutsu. B pretends to be paralyzed by it, causing Sasuke to lower his guard and allowing B to attack him with Lariat. Sasuke is left badly injured and it falls to Jugo to heal him. B enters Tailed Beast mode and attacks Taka with a Tailed Beast Ball, which Suigetsu uses his body to block. He survives, but is knocked unconscious. Unwilling to lose his teammates, Sasuke uses his Mangekyo Sharingan to perform Amaterasu on B. As B writhes in pain, he nearly crushes Kareen with a tentacle, prompting Sasuke to sever it to protect her. B's transformation recedes, Taka collects his body, and they deliver it to Tobi. It's revealed that in an earlier secret conversation with Tobi, Sasuke admitted that he not only wants to kill the elders, but all the residents of Konoha. Sasuke explains that the grief of losing Itachi and everyone being ignorant of how Itachi sacrificed his life for peace made it impossible for him to follow in Itachi's footsteps, and he felt that the villagers are just as guilty, even going as far as to threaten to kill the loved ones of anyone who dared to oppose him. As they recuperate, they discover that they've been followed by Kumonin. They escape before they can be drawn into battle and set out for Konoha. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha in the anime, on their way to Konoha, Taka passes a construction site that reminds Sasuke of Team 7's mission to rescue Naho, Five Kage Summit. Tobi intercepts Taka on their way to Konoha, explaining that the bee was a fake, the real bee having escaped when Sasuke severed the tentacle. While trying to decide if and how they will compromise, Zetsu appears and announces that Konoha has been destroyed already and that Danzo Shimura has been appointed the next Hokage. Because Danzo was the main conspirator in the Uchiha clan's assassination, Tobi comes up with an alternative for capturing the Eight Tails. Taka must go to the Five Kage Summit being held within a few days to kill Danzo. Sasuke accepts these terms and is led to the Land of Iron by White Zetsu. 
On arrival, White Zetsu points Donzo out to them, and Taka finds a place where they can ambush him. Taka's presence is discovered, exposed by White Zetsu on Toby's orders, and the country's samurai mobilize to capture them. Sasuke kills dozens of samurai, attracting the fourth Raikage to their location. Taka engages the Raikage and his bodyguards. While Sasuke neutralizes C, Jugo fights and is defeated by the Raikage. Sasuke and the Raikage turn their attentions to each other, but Sasuke is unable to pierce the Raikage's lightning release chakra mode. The Raikage's lightning augmented physical attacks prove similarly formidable, and it is only by manifesting an underdeveloped Susano that Sasuke survives the Raikage's Liger Bomb. Sasuke tries to discourage further contact from the Raikage by coating Susano with Amaterasu's flames, but the Raikage attacks regardless willfully forfeiting his left arm in order to avenge Killer B, his younger brother. Sasuke and the Raikage prepare to attack each other yet again, but are stopped by Gara, now the Kazakage. Gara asks for a chance to speak with Sasuke, which the Raikage agrees to so he can have his arm healed. Gara shares his own experience with loneliness and vengeance, and how he came to decide that they were not worthwhile pursuits. He discourages Sasuke from making the same mistakes as he did, but Sasuke refuses to listen because all he can see is darkness. Unable to get through to him, Gara and his bodyguards attack. Sasuke escapes by caving the room in with his Susano and locates Karin. While telling her to leave, Suigetsu and Jugo behind to have her guide him to Danzo. Danzo flees as soon as they arrive and Sasuke's attempt to pursue is blocked by the 5th Mizukage. With his chakra running low, Sasuke nearly succumbs to her boil release, only to be saved by White Zetsu's spore technique. He escapes from the Mizukage, but is met by the 3rd Suchikage, who seemingly vaporizes him with dust release, detachment of the primitive world technique. Sasuke is saved at the last moment by Tobi, who sends him to Kamui's dimension to keep him safe. He also sends Karin with him to revitalize him. Tobi releases both of them later once he's tracked down Danzo, making good on his promise to help Sasuke avenge the Uchiha clan by killing him. Before they start fighting, Sasuke asks for Danzo to confirm that Itachi really was ordered to kill the Uchiha by Konoha's leadership. Danzo, assuming Sasuke heard this from Itachi, criticizes Itachi for revealing the secret and concludes that Itachi, in doing so, is a traitor to Konoha. Taking this as confirmation, Sasuke uses Susano to crush Danzo in anger. Danzo, however, appears unharmed and starts attacking Sasuke. Sasuke counters a number of times, even evolving a Susano to a completed form, but each time Danzo is seemingly fatally wounded, he emerges a short distance away unharmed. From observing Danzo during their fight, Sasuke notices that he has many Sharingan embedded on his arm, and that they close at regular intervals. He concludes that this is the key to Danzo's survival, and that when all eyes close, he won't be able to avoid injury anymore. Danzo confirms this as Izanagi. Their battle continues on until Danzo is left with only one Sharingan remaining, at which point he and Sasuke clash, stabbing each other. Danzo waits for Izanagi to undo the damage, only to realize that what he thought was a remaining Sharingan was Sasuke's Genjutsu, and that his injury is irreversible. Desperate to escape, Danzo takes Karin hostage, threatening to kill her if Sasuke comes near. Sasuke doesn't hesitate to stab through her with his Chidori sharp spear in order to fatally wound Danzo. Dying, Danzo staggers closely to Sasuke and Tobi and activates his reverse force symbol ceiling in order to kill them both, but they escape. Satisfied with his revenge on Danzo, Sasuke states his intentions to continue on to Konoha. Tobi advises that he rest, as he's already starting to experience blindness from overusing the Mangekyo Sharingan. He also suggests that Sasuke finish off Karin and then leaves with Danzo's body. Sasuke approaches Karin and bids her farewell as he prepares a Chidori, but he is stopped by the arrival of Sakura. She tells them that she's defected from Konoha and is prepared to help him in his goals, even if that means destroying the village. Suspicious, Sasuke tells her to kill Karin to prove her loyalty, but as she nears Karin, Karin warns her that Sasuke is attacking her from behind. His attack is blocked by Kakashi, who is furious at Sasuke for trying to kill Sakura. Kakashi explains that he's aware that Sakura came to kill Sasuke, and doesn't want her to need to go through with that because of his own failings as their teacher. Kakashi tries to discourage Sasuke from the path of vengeance he's on, which Sasuke laughs at, having grown tired of people trying to change his mind, and then shouts that he will only stop if his clan is brought back to him. Realizing Sasuke is serious about his threats to kill everyone, Kakashi sends Sakura away to heal Karin. As they start fighting, Sasuke once again refuses to listen to Kakashi about giving up on his revenge, and says that he wants to hear their screams and anguish for laughing at Itachi's sacrifice, and also states that Kakashi's Sharingan is yet another example of Konoha profiting off the Uchiha's downfall. The rage of this realization brings his Susano to evolve yet again, but it dissipates immediately afterwards, his eyes on the verge of blindness. Sakura then tries to kill him from behind, but she ultimately can't bring herself to do so. 
Sensing her, Sasuke grabs her by the throat, takes her kunai, and tries to kill her, but she's rescued by Naruto, who is intent on stopping the fighting. When asked by Naruto why he would attack Sakura, Sasuke announces his plan to destroy the village and kill all the residents to avenge Itachi, as well as admitting to murdering Danzo and his desire to do the same to them. Sasuke and Naruto clash with Chidori and Rasengan respectively, but their mental states connect. Sasuke offers Naruto two choices, kill him or get killed, but Naruto rejects both. The impact of their attacks send them flying and Sasuke is saved by Tobi. As Tobi tries convincing Sasuke to retreat, Naruto tells Sasuke that they have become equals and they will both die the next time they fight. Although angry at Naruto for refusing to give up on him, Sasuke accepts this and vows to kill Naruto first. He finally agrees to leave with Tobi, and when they get back to the mountain's graveyard, he asks for Itachi's eyes, needing to restore his sight if he's to become stronger than Naruto and kill him. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown. After transplanting Itachi's eyes into Sasuke, Tobi advises that he rest until he gets used to them. Sasuke claims that he's already more powerful because he can feel Itachi. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation. Sasuke asks Zetsu if he can take off the bandages over his eyes. Zetsu tells him to be patient. By the next day, Sasuke is tired of waiting and removes the bandages anyways, killing White Zetsu with his Susano in order to test his new powers. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax. Sasuke leaves the mountain's graveyard and wanders through two towns, but finds both strangely empty. When members of the White Zetsu army come after him, Sasuke asks what's currently happening in the world. The Zetsus avoid answering and try to capture him. He destroys most of them with a Matarasu and interrogates one with a Genjutsu. The Zetsu reveals that Tobi has initiated the Fourth Shinobi World War in order to capture Killer B and Naruto. Sasuke decapitates this last Zetsu and then goes looking for Naruto himself, intending to make good on his promise to kill him. Immediately upon entering a nearby forest, Sasuke sees Itachi going in the opposite direction. Sasuke gives chase, desperately wanting to speak to Itachi. Because he has business elsewhere, Itachi doesn't stop to talk, but he does field some of Sasuke's questions. Itachi has been brought back with the impure world reincarnation. He spared Sasuke all those years ago because Sasuke was only a child, innocent of the rest of the Uchiha's conspiracies against Konoha. He pushed Sasuke onto a path of vengeance because he regretted killing their family and wanted Sasuke to hold him accountable for his actions. The criminal activities Sasuke has been involved in since his death are not what Itachi wanted, as he wished for Sasuke to be regarded as a hero for killing him. This only angers Sasuke, who says Itachi had no right to decide his fate. As he approaches his destination, Itachi tells Sasuke to remain outside. Sasuke ignores him and follows him into the cave where the user of the impure world reincarnation is hiding. Sasuke initially believes the user is Orochimaru, but on closer inspection recognizes him as Kabuto Yakushi. Confused with the situation, Sasuke demands answers and Kabuto gives him the goal behind the war. By capturing Naruto and B and using all nine-tailed beasts, Tobi plans to resurrect the Ten Tails, become his Jinchuriki, and cast infinite Tsukiyomi on the world. Sasuke also learns that he had been promised as a compensation for Kabuto by Tobi in exchange for his cooperation. Disapproving of Tobi and Kabuto's war against the nations, Sasuke is angry for being used and manipulated all along. Because Itachi's mission is to stop Kabuto, so as to end the impure world reincarnation, Sasuke tries to end things quickly by simply killing him. Itachi blocks this attack, explaining that the impure world reincarnation will not be ended if Kabuto dies, and their only option is to trap him in a genjutsu. Aware of this, Kabuto avoids making eye contact with either of them, instead sending out his snakes to attack them. They counter with their Susano, but Sasuke notices that the snakes, as well as Kabuto himself, display abilities similar to Suigetsu and Karin. Kabuto explains that he's altered his body using Orochimaru's research on both of them, and he's done the same for Jugo, which has enabled him to enter Sage Mode. In Sage Mode, Kabuto shields his eyes so he's immune to Genjutsu. Needing to coordinate, Itachi reminds Sasuke of a mission they went on as children to hunt a boar, which they reenact with their Susano against Kabuto. Kabuto avoids them and commandeers Sasuke's sword, which he uses to attack Itachi. Itachi takes the sword back from him and uses it to cut the tip off of one of Kabuto's horns. Kabuto tries to turn Sasuke against Itachi, pointing out that Itachi has been lying to him for most of his life. Itachi admits to having made many mistakes in how he's handled Sasuke, but he promises to tell Sasuke something after they've stopped Kabuto, for which purpose he's already started using Izanami. Kabuto resumes his attack, using a variety of jutsu available to him through Sage Mode and his research of others, namely the Sound 5 and even Orochimaru. Because his body is immortal, Itachi focuses on protecting Sasuke from harm while waiting for an opportunity to complete the Izanami. When the opportunity presents itself, Itachi allows Kabuto to take Sasuke's sword again, which Itachi once again takes back and uses to cut the tip off of the same horn. This creates a loop of sensation that is independent of vision, trapping Kabuto in a genjutsu and ending the battle. 
Itachi then instructs Kabuto to end the impure world reincarnation. As Kabuto does the hand seals, Sasuke tells Itachi that he can't do as Itachi wished and forgive Konoha for taking his clan and brother. Itachi apologizes for ever expecting him to, remarking that the clan's destruction might have been avoided if he had been honest with Sasuke from the start. As Itachi begins to disappear, Sasuke says he intends to destroy Konoha no matter what Itachi says, and Itachi recognizes that he cannot change Sasuke's mind. Rather than poke Sasuke's head as he always did, Itachi rests his forehead on Sasuke's and tells Sasuke that he will love him no matter what choice he makes. His soul then departs to the Pure Land. With Itachi's parting words, Sasuke starts to question the meaning of a shinobi, a village, and a clan, and doesn't know what he should do now. When he's found by Suigetsu and Jugo, they inform him that Madara Uchiha, unrelated to Tobi, escaped the release of the Impure World Reincarnation, leaving Itachi's last mission unfinished. Before deciding how he feels about this, Sasuke decides he wants to find Orochimaru. To that end, Jugo locates Anko Midarashi, who has a cursed seal. Sasuke then uses the evil releasing method on her to revive Orochimaru from her cursed seal. Although insisting he still desired revenge, Sasuke explains to Orochimaru that he wants to understand the world better so that he can, in turn, understand Itachi and decide which side of the conflict he should pick. Curious about this change that has come over Sasuke, Orochimaru leads him, Suigetsu, and Jugo to the Naka Shrine in Konoha. There, Orochimaru releases the souls of the first four Hokage from the stomach of the Shinigami, and then uses the white Zetsu spores that Sasuke was secretly planted with as sacrifices to reincarnate the Hokage. Sasuke briefly summarizes the current events of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Before he chooses which side to take in the conflict, he wants to know more about what Konoha is and also what it was intended to be, which may in turn help him understand the sacrifices Itachi made when he was alive. Each of the Hokage gives their own thoughts on Konoha and the Uchiha and what they did while they were in office to reconcile the two, at times, opposing forces. From listening to them, particularly the first Hokage, Sasuke decides that Konoha is worth protecting, as its destruction would only nullify everything that Itachi did in his life. He heads towards the battlefield and allows the Hokage to accompany. As they leave, Karin tracks them down and vents her anger at Sasuke, who immediately forgives Sasuke's earlier attempt on her life after he simply apologizes to her. The Hokage reach the battlefield before he does, but he's no less willing to help the allied shinobi forces defeat the Ten Tails. With the exception of Naruto, all of Sasuke's former comrades are confused and suspicious of his sudden arrival and demand an explanation. Sasuke replies he has decided to protect the village, and he wants to be Hokage to change the current ninja system. When they retort that's impossible and remind him of his past actions, Sasuke says he doesn't care about that. Nevertheless, he joins forces with Naruto and Sakura along with the original Rookie 9. The now reunited Team 7 charges into battle, cutting through the Ten Tails army of clones. Because the clones' numbers are too great, Team 7 decides to perform their own summons so that they can focus on the Ten Tails itself. Sasuke summons Aoda. Once close enough, Sasuke and Naruto combine efforts into the Scorch release, Halo Hurricane Jet Black Arrow Style Zero, successfully damaging the Ten Tails' arm. Naruto wants to free the captured beasts, but Sasuke prefers to let them burn. Tobi, who is revealed to actually be Obito Uchiha, appears above the Ten Tails shortly afterwards and starts performing a jutsu. Sasuke and the rest of the allied shinobi forces try and stop him, but fail and Obito becomes the Ten Tails Jinchuriki. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinchuriki Sasuke allows the Hokage to attack Obito first, taking advantage of their immortal bodies to test Obito's new abilities. When the first three Hokage are quickly defeated, Sasuke prepares to join in with the Susanoo, but Obito's truth-seeking balls quickly pierce through it and Obito grabs both him and Naruto. The fourth Hokage rescues them and tries fighting Obito on his own, but he suffers a defeat just like the other Hokage did. After regrouping, Sasuke and Naruto, with assistance from the 4th and 2nd Hokage, use another attack on Obito and smile when they succeed in landing a direct hit. Although this attack actually succeeds in hitting Obito, they discover that his new body is impervious to most conventional forms of attack. From testing with different jutsu, Naruto notices that Obito is vulnerable to Senjutsu. He and the 4th exploit this weakness by entering Sage Mode and attacking. Seeing how strong Naruto has become, Sasuke grows jealous and angry. After he recovers, Obito recreates the God Tree in order to carry out the Eye of the Moon plan, as well as to decimate the allied shinobi forces. As some allied shinobi, including Naruto, start fearing that the battle is lost, Sasuke uses his Susanoo to cut through one of the tree's roots and berates Naruto for nearly giving up, which inspires Naruto to continue fighting. Sasuke then has Jugo imbue his Susanoo with Senjutsu Chakra, allowing him to assist Naruto in Ninetales mode in attacking Obito. Despite working together, Naruto and Sasuke attack separately, which Obito proves consistently able to avoid or block. 
Deciding to combine efforts, Sasuke coats his Susanoo around Naruto's tailed beast mode, increasing its offensive and defensive capabilities. With further assistance from the rest of the Konoha 11, they succeed in cutting Obito down and ultimately removing the tailed beasts from his body. Obito is unable to move after his defeat, and Sasuke prepares to finish him off. Kakashi stops him and offers to deal with Obito himself, sending Sasuke to help Naruto deal with Madara, who is fighting the first Hokage. By the time he arrives there, however, Madara has been restored to life and has neutralized the first. Sasuke was quick to notice that Madara had been restored into living flesh and tries to burn him with a Matarasu. When this failed because Madara absorbed the flame, Sasuke resorts to physical attacks with his sword, but Madara dodges and asks that Sasuke join forces with him, impressed by his abilities. When Sasuke refuses, Madara advises that he stay out of his way or else he will die. Madara goes on to recapture the tailed beasts, including those sealed within Killer B and Naruto. As he prepares to revive the Ten Tails and become its Jinchuriki like Obito before him, Sasuke attacks him but is caught in mid-air by Madara. Having already warned Sasuke once, Madara stabs him in the chest with his own sword. Sasuke tries to get up, determined not to let Madara win, and in turn let Itachi's memory be sullied, but he passes out as the life fades from him. On the edge of death, Sasuke is met by Hagoromo Otsotsuki, the famed Sage of Six Paths. Hagoromo warns Sasuke about the infinite Tsukiyomi that Madara is planning to use. Because Sasuke is the reincarnation of Indra, Hagoroma's oldest son, Hagoroma can give him half of his power that, in combination with the heavy gifts in Naruto, the reincarnation of Hagoroma's other son, Asura, will enable them to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi. Sasuke agrees and receives the Six Paths Yin power. He regains consciousness and finds that the damage to his body has been healed by Kabuto, who escaped the Izanami and now feels indebted to Itachi. Sasuke's left eye, meanwhile, has become a Rinnegan. Sasuke releases Tobirama from Madara's restraints and has him teleport to Naruto's location. Arriving as Naruto is facing Madara, Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to see Madara's invisible doppelganger. When Madara tries to steal Sasuke's left eye, Sasuke switched places with his sword, causing Madara to impale himself. While Madara recovers from the injury, Naruto and Sasuke attack from opposing sides in an effort to activate the seal given to them by Hagoromo. Madara escapes at the last moment and goes after Kakashi, taking his Sharingan. Sasuke catches up to Madara and bisects him, but he uses Kamui on his upper half to swap dimensions. Sasuke is later surprised to see Sakura appear after Obito used Kamui to save her from Madara. Regrouping with Team 7 and unsure when he'll return, Sasuke warns the others to be on guard. While they wait, Kakashi remembers when his team first introduced themselves years ago and wonders what Sasuke's intents are now that Itachi's gone. When asked this, Sasuke doesn't reply and Kakashi doesn't push it because they have more things to worry about. Sensing Madara coming, Kakashi reminds him of Team 7's first lesson, the importance of teamwork. Madara eventually returns with his other Rinnegan. Sakura launches the first attack and Sasuke follows close behind her. When she's stabbed by Madara's rod, Sasuke uses Chidori's sharp spear to cut off the rod and allow Naruto to get her away. Sasuke sees four more Madaras and has Naruto fight them while White Madara moves into position to use the infinite Tsukiyomi. Madara rains numerous Jibaku Tensei down on Team 7. Sasuke cuts through several with his complete body, Susano, but isn't able to reach Madara in time to stop the infinite Tsukiyomi from being cast. Kaguya Otsotsuki strikes. Sasuke hurries back to Naruto and uses Susano to shield him, Sakura, and Kakashi from the infinite Tsukiyomi's effects. Naruto tries to go and check on the others, but Sasuke tells him to be patient. Sakura asks what's happening, but Sasuke tells her and then Kakashi they don't need to know because there's nothing they can do and assumes leadership of Team 7 because he believes that only he can stop the infinite Tsukiyomi with his Rinnegan. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world of trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts and that only Team 7 as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries, which Sasuke retorts that Madara is disillusioned. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, and his body is converted into Kage Otsutsuki, which leaves Team 7 shocked. Sasuke and Naruto recognize Kaguya from their meeting Hagoromo as the origin of Chakra. Although she now has access to the chakra of those trapped within the infinite Tsukiyomi, she wants Team 7's too, specifically Naruto's and Sasuke's. She transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Sasuke summons Garuda to save himself and Naruto, ignoring Kakashi, Sakura, and an unconscious Obito Uchiha. Sasuke reminds Naruto that only they can stop Kaguya, and therefore what happens to the others doesn't matter. Naruto understands, but he can't actually help but save them anyway, reminding Sasuke of when he saved him in the Land of Waves. Naruto engages Kaguya while Sasuke attacks from above with his Susanoo. Kaguya repels him and he nearly falls into the lava. 
he drops his sword and loses it to that fate, but he's able to teleport to safety with Emeno Tejikata. When they try to come up with a way to place Hagoromo's seal on her, Kaguya sneaks up behind Naruto and Sasuke, paralyzes them with Black Zetsu, and starts absorbing their chakra. Black Zetsu reveals its role in manipulating the Uchiha clan as part of its plan of resurrecting Kaguya, which angers Sasuke. Naruto breaks them free and distracts her with his sexy reverse harem technique, which nearly allows them to initiate the seal. She shifts dimensions before they connect, encasing them in ice. Sasuke shatters the ice with the blaze release Kagatsuchi, only for Kaguya to then grab him and send him off by himself to a dimension of sand dunes. Sasuke wanders the dunes, finding the spot where Naruto's chakra signature is strongest. There, he is shortly afterwards found by Obito and Sakura, who with considerable effort are able to briefly open a portal between dimensions. Sasuke uses Ame no Tejikara to teleport to Sakura's side by switching places with her flak jacket, catches Sakura as she's about to collapse from exhaustion, thanks her and Obito, and is then reunited with Naruto. Frustrated that her attempt to separate them failed, Kaguya shifts to a dimension with powerful gravity immobilizing them while she kills them with her all-killing ash bones. Kakashi shields Sasuke from her attack, while Obito shields Naruto while using Kamui to warp the bone that was meant to hit and kill Kakashi, only Obito dies. Sasuke forces himself up and nearly hits Kaguya with a Chidori, forcing her to shift dimensions to somewhere with normal gravity. As Naruto stays with a dying Obito, Sasuke goes after Kaguya on his own. Sasuke uses Susanoo to fight her by himself, until Naruto, done grieving for Obito, comes to join him. Naruto's super tailed beast Rasen Shuriken destabilizes the tailed beast's chakra within her, prompting her to create an expansive truth-seeking ball to destroy them all. With the end near, Team 7 mobilizes for its final assault. Kakashi, using chakra received from Obito, pierces through her. Naruto, with additional help from Kakashi, uses shadow clones to exhaust her countermeasures. Sasuke teleports closer to her in order to initiate the seal and prepares his left eye to fire Amaterasu in the event that she tried to teleport to the ice world again. Sakura punches her when she tries to escape. When both Naruto and Sasuke make contact with her, the tailed beasts are removed from Kaguya's body and she, as well as Black Zetsu, is entombed within the Six Paths Chibaku Tensei. Having been waiting for this, Hagoromo then summons them all back to the real world with the help of the dead Kage and congratulates them for their victory. Madara has also been returned, so Sasuke prepares to kill him, but Hagoromo stops him, explaining that Madara is dying anyway. After Madara shares his dying words with the first Okage, Hagoromo returns the Kage's souls to the Pure Land. Hagoromo also informs Naruto and Sasuke that they can release the world from the infinite Tsukiyomi by simply joining hands. However, Sasuke has other things he'd like to do first. He starts by placing the tailed beasts under his control with a genjutsu, traps them with Chibaku Tensei, and promises to release the infinite Tsukiyomi only after he's killed the current Kage. Sasuke explains that the tailed beasts have too often been a source of conflict and that the Kage have consistently failed to keep the peace. The world would be better off without any of them. Because Naruto is the only one who can challenge him at this point, Sasuke states his intention to kill him. Sakura dissuades him by telling him that she still loves him and pleading for him to return home if he ever loved her. However, Sasuke uses his Sharingan Genjutsu to make Sakura fall asleep. Condemned by Kakashi for this, Sasuke tells Kakashi that there is no reason for him and Sakura to love each other, and her love is a remnant of a failed past. Sasuke then travels to the Valley of the End, the same place where he and Naruto first fought and waits for Naruto to come to him. When Naruto arrives, he tells Sasuke it's impossible to do everything alone like he plans to, pointing to the missteps Itachi made and their own successful teamwork against Kaguya. Sasuke replies that he only wants to remake a better world, one where he can, like Itachi before, be solely responsible for the difficult decisions that must be made so nobody else needs to. This is what he believes a true Hokage to be. To do this, Sasuke says he intends to erase the past by severing all his bonds and killing Naruto. Enraged, Naruto insists that he will be Hokage, not Sasuke, because Sasuke is still going against what Itachi wanted for him, and they start fighting. After a brief exchange of blows reminiscent of their fight years ago, Naruto and Sasuke start trading punches with their tailed beast mode in Susano. Sasuke chastises Naruto for not attacking with an intent to kill, but Naruto, like last time, is unwilling to do that, not wishing for either of them to go without the other. Sasuke uses his Susano to perform Chidori, and Naruto uses tailed beast mode to make a tailed beast ball, which they clash with. The collision of the two attacks creates a large explosion, doing noticeable but not debilitating damage to their respective avatars. As they mentally connect, Naruto says there's no guarantee his plan will work, and Sasuke replies that it doesn't matter, because thanks to his Six Paths power, he has options for immortality to allow him to watch over the world for eternity. Each therefore powers up the avatars, Sasuke by channeling the captured tailed beasts into his Susanoo, and Naruto by merging his avatar with the avatars of two shadow clones. The two meet attacks once again, this time creating a giant explosion that strips away their avatars and leaves them with too little chakra to use it practically. 
they instead resort to taijutsu, kicking and punching each other into the night. As they near exhaustion, Naruto musters what little chakra he can, which Sasuke immediately absorbs. However, as the chakra was not molded to fit Sasuke's chakra signature, he wasn't able to utilize it. Having expected this, Naruto delivers a solid punch, finally irritating Sasuke over the endless repetition of their fight. Sasuke uses Chidori and Naruto, taking the last remaining chakra that Ninetales can give him, counters with the Rasengan. With Naruto waking up earlier to find that much of the Valley of the End had been destroyed, that they each had lost an arm, and that neither could move. Sasuke wakes up afterwards and asks Naruto why he continues to try to stop him, and never gives up on him. Naruto's usual response that they're friends doesn't convince Sasuke since it obviously goes beyond that. So Naruto elaborates that he experiences pain whenever Sasuke is going through a tough time. Sasuke is shocked, knowing full well that Naruto has experienced various misfortunes in his life, smiled through all of them, yet would suffer without him. Sasuke thinks about their childhood of being orphans, and how Sasuke came to see Naruto as a friend because they shared the same pain. Both went to sleep again because of exhaustion. Sasuke dreams of his brother and recaps all the obstacles Naruto went through to get stronger. Sasuke has an epiphany. After years of trying to push the bonds with his friends away, Sasuke realizes his desire to return to them and feels guilty for having rejected them for his selfish goals. When they wake up the next day, Sasuke is surprised that they're still alive and laughs when Naruto is angry and still wants to beat him as he's too weak to fight him in this condition. Sasuke finally admits defeat as he's come to accept that Naruto is just as vital to him as he is to Naruto. He asks Naruto to give his Rinnegan to Kakashi in order to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, but he wants to end his own life in order to atone for his sins. But Naruto refuses and vows to be there for his friend no matter what, which moves Sasuke to tears. Sakura and Kakashi arrive, and Sakura begins healing them. Guilt-ridden for the pain he put Sakura through, Sasuke tries to speak to her, but she tells him not to because she needs to concentrate on healing them. Sasuke then apologizes to Sakura for everything he's done, which she tearfully accepts, and Sasuke smiles at her. All the while, as Kakashi looks on with joy as Team 7 reunites for good. Sasuke and Naruto do a rat hand seal to undo the infinite Tsukiyomi and free everyone and the tailed beasts. As they do so, Sasuke talks about how he and Naruto have come to understand each other's feelings and pain, and he finally understands why Naruto never gave up on him. In the anime, following the war, Sasuke is kept in the custody of the Konoha Torture and Interrogation Force until his fate is decided. Blank period. Several months later, Sasuke is pardoned for his crimes based on his service in helping undo the infinite Tsukiyomi, along with the good word of Naruto and Kakashi's influence as a world hero and the new Hokage, respectively. While offered to be given a fully maneuverable prosthetic arm made of Hashirama Senju's cells to replace his lost one, Sasuke declined the offer as it would take months. Instead, he decided to immediately leave Konoha to wander the world curious how different it will appear to him now that his outlook has changed. Sakura offers to come with him, but he declines, explaining that his journey is also one of atonement and that she has no part in that. He then pokes her forehead, promises to her that he will see her when he returns, and thanks her. As he leaves the village, he's met by Naruto, who returns to him his forehead protector. Sasuke accepts the headband and credits Naruto for teaching him the true meaning of a shinobi. While on his travels, Sasuke would often help the Great Five Nations wherever something tried to disrupt the peace. Although he often did this without being seen, he often left subtle hints that he was responsible. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the war, Sasuke crosses paths with Hiyashi Hyuga, who falls unconscious in front of him. He returns Hiyashi to Konoha, and while there, discovers a series of meteorites from the moon bombarding the village. When one particularly large meteor makes it through the village's defenses, Sasuke quickly destroys it. Sasuke vanishes afterwards, lingering only long enough to note to Kakashi that Sasuke himself is the only one who can protect the village when Naruto is away. In the end credits, in correspondence to Naruto and Hinata's wedding, Sasuke continues his journey through the desert. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love, riding upon a spring breeze. Rumors start to spread that someone fitting Sasuke's description is conspiring to destroy Konoha. Konoha sends repeated messages to Sasuke to try and confirm or deny the rumors, but he doesn't respond to any. Naruto's hypothesis that he finds the rumors too ludicrous to give them any attention. However, when one of the messages mentions Sakura has been captured, he immediately returns to the village. Sakura is able to deal with most of her captors herself, but Sasuke finishes off the few remaining. He then leaves without even saying hello to his friends. At the end of the novel, it's hinted that Sasuke returns to the village to be with Sakura when he states, I'm home, Sakura. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. On Naruto and Hinata Hyuga's wedding day, Sasuke sends a congratulation message by Hawk to their wedding reception, which Sakura collects. Akatsuki Hiden, evil flowers in full bloom. During his journey, Sasuke meets two boys that tell him stories about Akatsuki. 
After he leaves them, he meets another boy who confuses him for Itachi, who the boy had met many years earlier. He tells Sasuke that Itachi was a very good person, which Sasuke agrees with before departing once more. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise As Sasuke starts investigating Kaguya Otsutsuki during his journey of redemption, he is forced to examine his former role as an Avenger and how his past will influence his future. During his traveling, he receives a message from Kakashi regarding the disappearances of Konoha, Kumo, and Kiri Shinobi, and Sasuke agrees to investigate. On his way to the Land of Lightning, Sasuke arrives at a bamboo village in the Land of Hot Water, and learns from the villagers of a rogue ninja group called the Dark Thunder Group whose leader, Karyu, admires Sasuke yet wants to kill him in order to surpass him. At the village, he meets two wandering shinobi, Chino and Nawaki. Sasuke finds the group attacking the village and defeats them, saving all the villagers from harm. Karyu admits he has admired Sasuke since the latter attacked the Kage summit, much to Sasuke's dismay that Karyu is tarnishing his name. Before he can turn Karyu over to Konoha, Karyu is killed by the father of one of his victims. When the Genjutsu fails to dispel after Karyu's death, Sasuke suspects the real culprit is on the loose. Sasuke later meets with Orochimaru and his former team Taka comrades to investigate the matter further. Sasuke maintains contact with Sai when Konoha is attacked and discovers the origins of the Dark Thunder group. He finds most of the missing Kiri and Kumo Shinobi on an isolated island and through luck discovers that Chino and Nawaki are in fact responsible for the disappearances. As they flee, Sasuke delivers the shinobi to their villages and thanks to advice from the Raikage, goes to Yukakure, where he finds and battles Chino. She reveals that she is seeking revenge due to that she is from a clan that was eliminated due to her village fearing its Katsuryugan, and she holds the Uchiha clan partially responsible. Because Sasuke understands her pain and hatred, he defeats them without seriously injuring them and convinces them to accept defeat. Sasuke drops them off at the village's prison, but he leaves a good word for them to be forgiven. After resuming his journey, Sasuke receives a letter from Naruto that mentions Sakura comparing his efforts to protect the village to that of his childhood dream of joining the Konoha military police force. Sasuke decides his home is with Sakura and makes the decision to return to Konoha, where he's greeted by Sakura. Welcome back, Sasuke, and he replies, I'm home, Sakura. New Era Two years after saving Konoha from a meteorite, Sasuke traveled alongside his now pregnant wife Sakura, who refused to leave his side. On the journey, Karin helped deliver the child, Sarada Uchiha, at one of Orochimaru's hideouts. Afterwards, Sasuke raised his daughter for some time, but he left Konoha early in her childhood, leaving Sarada with few memories of him. Years later, at the time Naruto became Hokage, Sasuke was investigating Kaguya within her sand dimension. During his investigation, Sasuke comes to suspect that she created the White Zetsu army in order to face some greater threat. He returns to Konoha, where he tells his hypothesis to his wife and the five Kage at the summit being held. Not wishing to cause a panic, the Kage agree to keep this to themselves for the time being. Wanting to safeguard the future of his daughter and the new generation, Sasuke continues his wanderings as he tries to find more information, using his Rinnegan to inspect other dimensions. Academy Entrance Arc In the anime, after a remnant of Root failed to destroy the village, Naruto brought the research of Gozu Tenno to Sasuke. Realizing the true nature behind it, Sasuke was amazed at how close Danzo came to replicating Kaguya's technique. After noting that it would help in his investigation, Naruto suggested that Sasuke return to the village for a while. Sasuke, however, simply asked Naruto to apologize to Sakura for his continued absence before leaving. Sarada Uchiha Arc Searching through Kaguya's dimensions, Sasuke returns to the earth through his portal. Upon arriving in a forest, both of his dojutsu weaken from overuse. Immediately after, Sasuke is attacked by a hooded figure. Fending him off, Sasuke discovers the assailant to be a young boy with a Sharingan whose clothes bear the Uchiha crest. As he questions who the boy is, the child retreats, which prompts Sasuke to send a message by Hawk to Naruto to inform him of the encounter, and to ask for a meeting with him at Ridge Tower. After waiting for a while, he's found by Sarada, who left Konoha to find her father. Seeing her with the Sharingan and having the Uchiha crest on her back, Sasuke suspects she's connected to the boy and almost attacks her until she calls out to him as dad, and he realizes she is his own daughter. When Naruto arrives shortly afterwards, Sasuke reprimands him for bringing children like Sarada and Chocho Akimichi along. Sarada defends Naruto, insisting that she came against his wishes because she wanted to meet Sasuke, wanted to know where he'd been all these years, wanted to know if Sakura was her real mother, and who Karin in the photo with Team Taka is. He ignores her questions and says his actions have nothing to do with her, causing her to storm out, crying. When Sasuke senses Naruto and Sarada being attacked by Shin Uchiha, the father of the boy from before, Sasuke rushes out to lend assistance. He swats away Shin's projectiles, and when Shin takes his sword, he blasts him with a great fireball and takes the sword back. However, this brief contact allows Shin to control the sword remotely with his Mangekyo Sharingan, which he uses when he has an opening to stab Naruto. 
Shin turns his attention to Sarada and Sasuke and rushes to protect Sarada from Shin's follow-up attack and has all the blades land at him. Sakura then appears and incapacitates Shin with a punch. Sakura apologizes to Sasuke for not making things clear to Sarada about his mission, but Sasuke insists he's at fault before one of Shin's creatures teleports him and Sakura away. Unable to locate their whereabouts, Sasuke believes Orochimaru knows where Shin is, and learning Shin is targeting Sarada, he decides to take her with him to ensure her safety. When they arrive, Sasuke promises retaliation against Orochimaru if he in any way is involved in the attack on his daughter, or the kidnapping of his wife. Orochimaru denies responsibility, confessing that Shin is an old experiment he has long before lost control of, and says that Shin's sons are actually his genetic clones. To help them deal with Shin, Orochimaru offers some suggestions about where they might find him. When Orochimaru suggests Sakura is already dead, Sasuke denies this as a possibility due to her not being a weak woman, stating that she likely will have already finished Shin off by the time they find her. When his Rinnegan recharges from his earlier dimensional travels, Sasuke manifests his Susano and transports Naruto, Sarada, and Chocho to Shin's hideout. As Sasuke guessed, Sakura is already in the middle of combat when they arrive, and Sasuke uses his Susano to punch the largest clone as he grabs Sakura. He pulls all the scalpels out of her arm and burns them with a Matarasu before asking if she can heal herself now. Sasuke and the others proceed to fight Shin, who is stabbed by the clones who then turn on Sasuke and Naruto. When the spying creature tries to teleport Shin once again, Sasuke calls out to Sarada to warn her about that, and then she kills the creature before activating her Sharingan and using her chakra enhanced strength to defeat some of the clones, making Sasuke smirk with pride. When the battle's over, Sasuke comments how soft Naruto is for offering to do no harm to the clones if they surrender, but agrees to drop them off at the Konoha Orphanage. When Sarada learns that Sakura really is her biological mother, she asks her father if he feels truly connected to Sakura. He says yes, because Sarada, as their daughter, is proof of their bond, moving Sarada to tears. Sasuke spends some time with Sarada and Sakura in Konoha, even posing for their first family photo. After some time, Sasuke is about to leave again and hugs his daughter as she sadly asks him when he will come back. Sasuke tells Sarada not to make such a face and pokes her on the forehead, promising to come home soon, which makes her very happy and prompts her to smile at Sakura. Sakura then gives him a bagged lunch and hopes for a kiss in return, but he leaves without further comment, only smirking in amusement as he walks away. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day as Sasuke finished business with a village near Konohagakure, he decided to return home to visit his family. There he learned from Boruto of the new village holiday, Parent and Child Day. Told where Sarada was, Sasuke decided to spend the day with his daughter. While Sarada was overjoyed at the idea, the normally poised man struggled to connect with his daughter, simply trying to get inspiration wherever he could, instead simply embarrassing Sarada. Finally having enough, Sarada stormed off. Sasuke was then approached by Sakura. He discussed with her his problem in connecting with Sarada. Sakura noticed that, having spent much of Sarada's life away and only hearing stories about Sasuke and his various exploits, Sarada probably became disillusioned at who Sasuke was as a person and his attempts at being a doting father seemed lame. Ultimately, Sakura suggested that he should approach Sarada more like Sasuke's relationship was with his father and brother back in the day, just enjoying the time they have together and talk about their goals. Later, while working on her shuriken skills, Sasuke approached her again, applauding her on her goal of becoming Hokage. He insisted that she would make a better Hokage than he ever could and would support her through her struggles, much to her delight. As the day ended, she and Sasuke returned home where the entire Uchiha family enjoyed a hearty meal together. Versus Momoshiki Arc As Sasuke continued his investigation, he found the remains of a stronger crop of white Zetsu in the mountain's graveyard, which he proceeded to destroy with a Matarasu. Upon arriving at Kaguya's ice dimension, Sasuke locates a scroll in Kaguya's palace. There, he's attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Yotsotsuki. While capable of fighting the former on equal terms, he realizes he can't take them both on at once. By using his Rinnegan's abilities, he is ultimately able to escape. Unable to read the scroll with his Rinnegan, Sasuke takes it back to Konoha to have it deciphered. He stops at Naruto's house to deliver it to him, but is attacked by Naruto's son, Boruto Uzumaki, who mistook Sasuke for his father. Sasuke easily blocks the attack and asks for Naruto's whereabouts. Hinata, Naruto's wife, tells him Naruto is still at the Hokage's office. On finding Naruto, Sasuke remarks that Boruto is quite similar to him. Naruto disagrees, thinking he has more in common with Sasuke, but retracts and says Boruto isn't like him either. Naruto thinks they are behind the new generation, which Sasuke disagrees with because the nature of Shinobi never changes, and they make a bet over this. As Sasuke leaves to go home to his family, Boruto launches a sneak attack. Sasuke once again avoids it effortlessly and pushes Boruto over. Impressed, Boruto asks Sasuke to train him, having heard that Sasuke is Naruto's only equal and thus best qualified to help him become stronger than his father. 
Sasuke tells Boruto to ask him again after he's learned to use the Rasengan. Boruto does just that and demonstrates it after he becomes able to form it. On seeing it, Sasuke remarks that Boruto's Rasengan is quite small, which Boruto wrongly believes is to mean he's been rejected, causing him to subsequently run off. Sarada then reveals herself to her father and tries to convince him that he's being too hard on Boruto, and he usually didn't apply that kind of dedication to anything. Sasuke tells his daughter that Boruto jumped to the wrong conclusion, and that he was going to agree to make him his student. In truth, Sasuke was quite satisfied, further impressed by the lightning nature Boruto applies to his Rasengan. The next day, Boruto demonstrates a normal-sized Rasengan, which Sasuke recognizes to be a result of using the Kote. Boruto tries to cover this up by boasting about his exceptional skill being the reason for the remarkable progress of his Rasengan. Sasuke cryptically references the fact that Boruto was willing to cheat to attain his goals by saying Boruto was quite different from Naruto and hoped it wasn't the case. Nonetheless, he agrees to train Boruto since he had already met his requirement. He later spoke to Boruto's Jonin sensei, Konohamaru Sarutobi, who agreed to let Sasuke take over his actual training. After his day training with Sasuke, the two sit by a fire and talk. Boruto starts asking about his father's weaknesses. Sasuke explains that Naruto has many weaknesses, but nonetheless managed to pull himself up and become Hokage. Believing Boruto's approach to be incorrect, Sasuke explained that Naruto is better understood by the hardships he overcame in his life than the flaws that he may have. This doesn't satisfy Boruto, so he throws himself into training for the upcoming Chunin exams, Shuriken Jutsu figuring prominently in Sasuke's lessons. While training, Boruto struggles with bending his throws, complaining that Shuriken Jutsu is Sarada's specialty because she is Sasuke's daughter. Sasuke retorts this assertion by applying the same reasoning to Boruto regarding the Shadow Clone technique, of which Boruto can only create two as opposed to his father who can create thousands. Sasuke keeps tabs on how deciphering the scroll is going, but it isn't until the day of the Chunin exam's finals that it is finally finished. Reading what it says, Sasuke finds his suspicions about the threat Kaguya was preparing for confirmed and rushes to inform Naruto. When he arrives at the stadium where the finals are being held, Kinshiki and Momoshiki are already attacking. Sasuke rescues Sarada from falling debris, but is confronted by Kinshiki when he tries to get her to safety. Shikamaru Nara briefly restrains Kinshiki and Momoshiki, allowing Sasuke to tell Naruto that the scroll says that Kinshiki and Momoshiki harvest planet's chakra in order to prolong their lives, and that Kaguya was building a white Zetsu army to prepare for their inevitable invasion. As Momoshiki starts attacking, Naruto forms his tailed beast mode around Boruto and Sarada in order to protect them. Sasuke layers his Susanoo over this to provide additional protection. The shield is insufficient against Momoshiki, so Naruto instructs Sasuke to focus on protecting the children while he fights Momoshiki alone. Sasuke does so, staying with Boruto and Sarada, and as a result, preventing them from stopping Naruto's capture. With his father gone, Boruto feels guilty about how he treated Naruto and reprimanded himself for being so uncool. Overhearing this, Sasuke affirmed Boruto's words, and noted that if it weren't for his mother and sister, he would be in the same position Naruto would be in the past. After Boruto asks Sasuke how his father overcame his hardships, Sasuke suggests Boruto ask Naruto in person and also telling him Naruto is stronger than him up until now, and to that end invites Boruto to join him in rescuing him. When Boruto asks why he'd been invited, and why Sasuke agreed to train him in the first place, Sasuke explains that Boruto is an exceptionally gifted shinobi and has the potential to surpass Naruto because he hates to lose. The five Kage then reveal themselves and offer their assistance to rescue Naruto, revealing that they are on friendly terms with Sasuke. Before they leave, however, Sasuke lends his forehead protector to Boruto, who had his confiscated by Naruto for cheating in the exams. Sasuke uses his Rinnegan to open a portal to Momoshiki's planet. Before they leave, Hinata tries to stop Boruto from leaving, who then puts on Sasuke's headband and affirms confidently that he's going to go save his father, reminding Hinata of Naruto when he was young. Sasuke approves of this demeanor and notes that Boruto is finally starting to carry himself like a true shinobi. When they arrive on Momoshiki's planet, which has long since had its chakra harvested, the group frees Naruto from Momoshiki and Kinshiki, who had him bound to a tree resembling the god tree, and immediately engage them in battle. Sasuke assists the 6th Mizukage and 4th Suchikage with restraining Kinshiki, and then joins Naruto, the 5th Kazukage, and the 5th Raikage against Momoshiki. He warns them not to use ninjutsu since Momoshiki can absorb them. Kinshiki breaks free and drives them back, then allows Momoshiki to absorb him to become stronger. Naruto and Sasuke start fighting Momoshiki with Taijutsu, during the course of which Sasuke is badly burned. Naruto catches him and heals his wounds with the Ninetales Chakra, allowing them to continue their tailed beast mode and Susanoo to strike him down. With Momoshiki down, the uninvited Katasuke tries to finish him off. This unwittingly revives Momoshiki, giving him a chance to paralyze Naruto and the Kage with Shadow Paralysis Jutsu while Sasuke elsewhere protects Boruto. Sasuke suggests that Boruto attack Momoshiki with his Rasengan, depending on its lightning nature to catch him off guard. 
This works and the Kage are freed, but an earlier injury prevents Naruto from fighting. He adds his chakra to Boruto's Rasengan, which Sasuke then helps him find an opening to use to destroy Momoshiki with. After the battle, Sasuke tells Naruto he won their bet when they return to Konoha, and Sasuke posed for a photograph with Naruto, Boruto, and the other Kage. However, in the anime, before they departed from the other dimension, Sasuke managed to catch a glimpse of Boruto's conversation with Momoshiki's fading spirit thanks to his Rinnegan, as well as notice that some technique had been used to stop the flow of time so the conversation passed unseen for everyone else. After everything returns to normal, apart from concern about the third Otsutsuki foe who escaped, Sasuke meets with Boruto again. He reveals that he knows about his mark from Momoshiki, insisting that Boruto let him know if anything had happened from it. He also let Boruto keep his old forehead protector as a sign of being Sasuke's official pupil. Sasuke decided to take advantage of his research being analyzed to spend a few days with his family. Later, Sasuke and Sakura, both smiling, watched Sarada and her teammates leave for a mission. Soon afterwards, Sasuke returned to his investigation of the Otsutsuki. In the anime, Sasuke came back to the village to give Naruto information and told him not to promote Sarada to Chunin due to refusal to obey direct orders. One Tail Escort Arc in the anime, having notified Tsunagakure that the Otsutsuki were searching for Shukaku, Sasuke, alongside Gara, Kankuro, and a Tsuna Genin team assembled at the Tailed Beast's location. Sasuke sent a messenger hawk to inform Konoha of the location and that he might be on Urashiki Otsutsuki's tail. There, Sasuke and Gara fought Urashiki and his puppets. As the two sides battled evenly, Boruto suddenly appeared, prompting Sasuke to protect his student, leading him to become distracted and Urashiki taking some of his chakra. As Sasuke leapt towards his opponent, Urashiki teleported him to another dimension. He ultimately arrived in Kaguya's ice dimension. While unharmed, his battle exhausted him too much. Sasuke was forced to spend time to recover his chakra to return to Sunagakure, as his Rinnegan was too weak to maintain a portal. Once recovering enough chakra, he detected Urashiki's repeated dimension hopping and teleported in time to stop the foe from striking down Boruko and Shinki. Sasuke's return prompted Urashiki to retreat. Sasuke brought the Genin to Konohagakure for treatment and reported the events to Naruto. There, it was decided that Shukaku would remain in Naruto's protection until better precautions were made. Time Slip Arc In the anime, as Sasuke began enjoying some downtime in the village, he was approached by Boruto. The pupil asked Sasuke about the nature of Jiraiya's worth as a ninja and his relationship with Naruto. Sasuke admitted that Jiraiya was a remarkable man, whose influence and guidance strongly shaped Naruto into the remarkable man he is today, even noting that they ultimately shared a father-son relationship. When Boruto asked if Sasuke could get him an Icha Icha book to learn more about the man, Sasuke bluntly refused, knowing that Boruto was too young for such an adult book. Later, Sasuke learned from Naruto and Shikamaru that Urashiki was on the move again, being even more indiscriminate in his stealing of chakra. Later, when Boruto was annoyed that he was the only genin that was put off of the mission to hunt Urashiki due to the Otsutsuki's previous vendetta against him, Sasuke however offered him an alternate plan of making Boruto a two-man team with him while staying within the village, which Naruto agreed to. Later that night, Urashiki was discovered and most of the Konoha Nin in the village went after him. Sasuke, however, doubted that things were working so smoothly, especially after learning that Genjutsu specialist Mirai Sarutobi went missing knowing of Urashiki's ability to replicate people's techniques from their chakra. Boruto doubted Urashiki would go after his father as he was still well guarded. He then realized Urashiki's true motive was an artifact found by the Konohagakure archaeological research team. His hunch is proven true when he and Sasuke engage in combat with Urashiki. The artifact turned out to be a turtle belonging to the Otsutsuki named Karasuki that required enough chakra to operate. Urashiki activates it while Boruto and Sasuke followed him. They entered a void where they battled, knocking Urashiki off a ledge too soon for him. When Karasuki finished its operation, Boruto and Sasuke found themselves back in Konohagakure, but to their shock, they realized that they had been sent to the past. Realizing Urashiki's plan was to acquire Kurama's chakra from Naruto as a child, Sasuke asked Karasuki about the enemy. The turtle explained that due to Sasuke's interference, Urashiki would not arrive in this time period for a few days. It also warned Sasuke and Boruto to avoid as much interaction with the past as possible or risk severe changes to the timeline as they know it. Taking this to heart, Sasuke and Boruto disguised themselves and stressed their situation to Boruto as he discovered how different the village was. Soon afterwards, Boruto and Sasuke bumped into Naruto and Jiraiya, who were in trouble for peeping on the women's hot spring. Jiraiya handed Boruto his binoculars, trying to frame him for his peeping, but the issue was quickly resolved as Tsunade arrived and scolded both Naruto and Jiraiya for their actions. Tsunade asked about Boruto and Sasuke's arrival, and Sasuke claimed they were traveling performers who utilized ninjutsu during their performances. 
Still somewhat suspicious, Tsunade ordered Naruto and Jiraiya to guard Boruto and Sasuke, proclaiming that a recently defected Genin, as well as Konoha still recovering from an assault during the Chunin exams, they needed to remain on their guard at all times, and couldn't afford to let strangers walk into their village. However, as soon as Tsunade leaves, Jiraiya left Naruto to take care of Boruto and Sasuke, much to Naruto's annoyance. As they walk around the village, they come across Sakura, and while Naruto approaches her, Sasuke leaves the area, warning Boruto that since he and Sakura were close, she could recognize him and drastically alter the future, and informed Boruto to remain by Naruto's side at all times before leaving. Days later, Sasuke bumped into Sakura again, dropping an old smeared letter from Sarada in the process. Eventually, Boruto confronted Sasuke about his past, having deduced the truth about his past self's absence. Still ashamed of his past mistakes, Sasuke simply admitted that at the time he saw no other way to accomplish his goal of revenge. When Boruto suggested finding his younger self to reason with him, Sasuke bluntly said they can't make such a risk. The following day, Urashiki finally appeared, prompting Sasuke and Boruto to guard the future Hokage. Urashiki acted quickly and struck Naruto with his hook, shocked to see that it failed to gain any chakra. Deciding the best course was to capture Naruto, Urashiki subdued Naruto and trapped Boruto and Sasuke, along with Jiraiya who happened along inside a stone prison. Sasuke explained to Jiraiya that he and Boruto were actually ninja from a distant village with a mission to stop Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, and that Urashiki had ties to Akatsuki. While seeing that they were still hiding some truth, Jiraiya decided to work with the duo, breaking them free by summoning a giant toad. Soon, Sasuke locked onto Naruto's location from detecting the Tailed Beast's chakra beginning to leak out. Along the way, having realized that the 8-trigram sealing style was stopping Urashiki from stealing the Ninetales chakra, Jiraiya placed powerful seals on Boruto and Sasuke to protect them as well. Upon finding Naruto, Urashiki's actions forced the boy into his version 1 state. While Sasuke engaged Urashiki, Jiraiya and Boruto went to subdue the rampaging Naruto. Boruto attempted to reason with his father, believing that talking would restore his sanity, but quickly became horrified as his efforts failed and Naruto ended up nearly killing him before Jiraiya subdued Naruto. After Urashiki retreats, Jiraiya tends to Boruto's wounds and talks about Naruto's lonely childhood and hatred suffered by the villagers, and suggests that Boruto train with him alongside Naruto, knowing the foe would return and believe that the two children's compatible nature, they would work and learn well together. The following day, Sasuke watched from afar as Jiraiya began instructing Naruto and Boruto on how to synchronize their chakra to create a new cooperation ninjutsu. As the day continued and the two children struggled to complete the task, Boruto, still reeling from being attacked by Naruto's berserker attack while influenced by Kurama's chakra, decided to distance himself from the increasingly angry Naruto. Jiraiya then approached Sasuke, asking him to deliver Naruto some food while he dealt with something. Sasuke reluctantly agreed. Upon confronting his best friend's past self, Sasuke was amazed to learn how even back then how committed Naruto was to save Sasuke from his dark path. Ashamed to see how much pain he put Naruto through, Sasuke told Naruto about how a friend struggled for years to help him after he lost his way, but never gave up until finally succeeding. After renewing Naruto's conviction, Sasuke left. He was then approached by Jiraiya again, shocking Sasuke by deducing who he really was. As Jiraiya dryly laughed off his accusation, he remained firm on his suspicion that he was connected to the rogue Genin. Jiraiya could tell that Sasuke and Boruto's desire to protect Naruto was genuine, and that they had their reason for keeping secrets. He made a deal with Sasuke not to delve deeper into their true identities, provided that Sasuke reveal all he knows about Urashiki. Sasuke then explained all he knew about the alien's abilities. After hearing all this, Jiraiya deemed that the best course of action would be to seal away Urashiki. Before they could formulate a proper plan, Sasuke detected Urashiki's return, speeding off with Jiraiya to help Boruto and Naruto. With Sasuke still drained from Urashiki's theft of his chakra, Sasuke struggled to keep up with the foe, even with the Sanin's aid. As Urashiki repeatedly evaded his foe's attacks, he smugly told them that he can see the future. Finding Urashiki's newest technique too dangerous, Sasuke tackled Urashiki and himself into the river to give his allies a chance to escape. While Urashiki escaped from the river unharmed and furious at Sasuke's constant interference, an unconscious Sasuke was fished out of the river by Sakura, who hid him and began treating him with their medical ninjutsu. Soon, Sasuke awoke, accidentally thanking Sakura by her given name. While not fully recovered, Sasuke decided to go help his friends. Sakura began asking him questions, but her efforts at healing him exhausted her and she fainted. Sasuke gently lay her down before heading off. He arrived to see his allies facing a transformed Urashiki. Their combined efforts barely were able to compete with the foe. Ultimately, seeing his friends get hurt made Naruto unleash his version 1 cloak again and went on a rampage. 
Boruto, however, managed to reach Naruto, and together they were able to perfect their new collaboration technique. With the combined effort of Jiraiya and Sasuke, the two kids were able to plow through Urashiki's final attack and obliterate him. Days later, after everyone recovered from battle, Sasuke and Boruto decided to leave soon as their mission was complete. They were approached by Sakura, who demanded for Sasuke to reveal how he knew her and what the contents of his letter were about. While Sasuke struggled to answer, Jiraiya gave a convincing alibi that Sasuke and Boruto were in fact such avid fans of his, they studied up on his entire life and wished to train under him, which Boruto and Sasuke awkwardly agreed to. The following day, after Sasuke used his Sharingan to erase the memories of everyone in the past they had made contact with to protect the timeline, the master and student used Karasuki to return to their time. Also, knowing that it was too dangerous for anyone else to wield the turtle's power, Sasuke and Boruto convinced it to go on a journey of self-discovery to find its own path. Once arriving in their present, Sasuke informed Naruto about the recent adventure and of Uroshiki's demise. While Naruto was glad that the peace had been restored to the world, Sasuke insisted that there were still hidden sites of Kaguya that he would have to investigate, but noted that he would make sure to visit his family much more regularly. Mujina Bandit's Arc Boruto later tells Sasuke of his encounter with Momoshiki, and informs him of the mark on his palm, leading to Sasuke telling Boruto that it wasn't normal, and also to be on guard. After Shoujoji was apprehended, Sai and Sasuke come in to interrogate him. As he questions Shoujoji about the mark on Boruto's palm, Shoujoji reveals that it's associated with the organization known as Kara, and the mark's nature is vaguely similar to Orochimaru's Juinjutsu. Kara Actuation Arc in the anime, after Sasuke finished probing Shoichi's mind, he learned that Kara was allegedly last seen in Amegakure. Sasuke was aided by Team 25 to investigate this new shadow organization. There, he learned that the village had decayed greatly since the last Great War. After Sai's team mapped out a series of underground tunnels, Sasuke and Sai went in alone. As they entered the area, they were assaulted by Garashi Tono, an orphaned citizen of Amegakure. He insisted that they were enemies who killed his friends. He was quickly subdued, and they explained their situation. Calming down, Garashi explained how a group of people were conducting an experiment underground. Garashi agreed to take them through the tunnels. This, however, turned out to be a trap, as Garashi ensnared the Konoha Nin and gassed them, revealing himself to be a supporter of Kara after the struggles he had to endure since the Fourth Shinobi World War. Sasuke saw through this deception after recognizing the look of shameless anger about him, using Shadow Clones to bait him. Before they could get information from him, Garashi was also tricked by Kara, as his gas mask was tampered with and he succumbed to the poison gas. As the tunnels began to collapse from another trap, they learned that Kara had been stationed there and was performing biological experiments. Sai and Sasuke reported their findings to Konohagakure. Afterwards, with the growing threat of Kara, Sasuke feared for his disciple's safety and loaned Boruto his other glove, instructing him to keep his Kama hidden at all costs. Sasuke learned that Victor, president of the Land of Valley's premier medical and research company, was in fact a member of Kara, and somehow acquired a sample of the first Hokage's cells. After Team 7 was defeated by two inners of Kara, Boruto and Sarada both approached Sasuke for help in growing stronger. He agreed to train Sarada, but upon learning of Boruto's desire to improve his Rasengan, Sasuke directed him to Kakashi, as Boruto didn't want to detract from his father's work, and Kakashi was the only other Rasengan user in the village. As Sarada began her training under Sasuke, she asked him to teach her his Chidori for superior penetrating power. Sasuke noted Chidori is a dangerous technique that draws its strength from a fierce linear path, and as such, only a superior perception can offset the normally reduced field of vision, something that Sarada's lesser Sharingan couldn't handle, as its natural range of vision was still too limited. Deciding to help Sarada master and improve her Sharingan, Sasuke focused her training on dodging a barrage of ball bearings similar to her previous enemy's technique. He would drill her on not overly relying on the Sharingan's natural insight, but rather focus on the entire area and let the Sharingan fill in the blanks. As Sarada began improving in her movements against barrage attacks, Sasuke noted that she was still very limited on how long she could maintain her Sharingan. When he suggested improving her stamina, Sarada asked about the Mangekyo Sharingan. Concerned about such a dangerous power, Sasuke insisted it was for another day. Soon, they were approached by Sakura. She was concerned Sarada was pushing herself too hard after just recovering, and even more horrified to hear her talk about the Mangekyo Sharingan. While Sakura insisted that she couldn't push herself so recklessly, Sarada was furious to hear her mother coddle her so, refusing to see why she wanted to get stronger, and stormed off. Along with his wife, Sasuke admitted to worrying about the path Sarada was potentially walking, but insisted she is as strong as they were back then. The following day, as Sarada continued struggling to evade all of Sasuke's barrages, Sakura approached again. She insisted that just blindly facing the challenge wouldn't yield any results. 
She forced Sarada into a sparring match with her, which Sasuke agreed to as Sakura's insight could determine things he couldn't. After Sakura quickly overwhelmed Sarada, she noticed that Sarada's biggest problems were her still underdeveloped chakra control and fear of defeat, which were inhibiting her development. Determined to break past her limits, Sarada faced down Sakura again, using her Sharingan to mimic the movements and general timing of Sakura's attacks to mimic Sakura's chakra-enhanced strength and reach a standstill. Sasuke was impressed by his daughter, and Sakura was now determined to help Sarada overcome her limits by joining in her training. Owl Arc during Naruto's fight against Boruto at the training hall, Sasuke watches the match from the sidelines. Afterwards, Sasuke arrives at the Hokage's office, where he tells Boruto of the value of scientific ninja weapons and that the danger of the world has yet to be driven out. He explains of a coming danger of enemies like the Otsutsuki clan. Naruto also admitted to knowing about Boruto's mark on his right palm, which was another reason Naruto approved the development of this advanced weaponry. While Boruto still insisted that they would rely solely on ninjutsu like in the Chunin exams, Naruto noted that the Chunin exams were to test one's growth as a ninja, whereas they are now in a battle for survival. Katasuke then arrived to retrieve his prototype, to which Naruto assigned Team Konohamaru a C-rank mission to escort the lead scientist back to the lab in Ryuben City. While Boruto stormed off in a huff, Sasuke is certain Boruto will calm down soon enough. Kawaki Arc Sasuke was sent to investigate coordinates discovered in intel recovered by Konohamaru, a location accessible only through space-time ninjutsu. He discovered an Otsutsuki-related site, which contained records on some of their members, specifically those who had been to their world which also led him to believe Kaguya came to this world with a partner. There, he also discovered another Ten Tails imprisoned. Sasuke managed to hide when Jigen arrived, but was left terrified when the leader of Kara absorbed some of the Ten Tails chakra for himself, briefly taking the form of Kaguya's supposed partner. As Jigen left to retrieve Kawaki, Sasuke determined the situation to be direr than he expected and felt the need to inform Naruto at once. Jigen later attacked Konohagakure and sent Naruto to an unknown dimension. Just as he was about to leave Naruto stranded, Sasuke, having detected Naruto's chakra and followed him there, appeared and kicked Jigen away to stop him from leaving before proceeding to team up with Naruto to fight Jigen, free to fight at full power, but even then Jigen successfully pressured them with his ability to seemingly conjure black rods from nowhere to stab them. However, Sasuke eventually deduced that Jigen's ability allowed him to shrink matter to microscopic levels and return it to its original size instantaneously, but told Naruto that wasn't his only secret uneasily. Recognizing Sasuke's impressive analytical skills and prowess with his dojutsu, Jigen noted that he must eliminate Sasuke first. Naruto and Sasuke continued to engage Jigen, eventually pushing him into a corner, at which point Jigen responded by progressing his karma to the next stage, worrying Sasuke who saw it firsthand. Sasuke informed Naruto that Jigen's appearance was similar to an unknown Otsutsuki he had witnessed earlier, as well as that he was aware of the existence of another Ten Tails. Deducing that Jigen is planning on draining the world of chakra, Sasuke activated his Susano while Naruto entered tailed beast mode. Jigen effortlessly overpowered the two, and despite their collaborative efforts, Jigen managed to impale Sasuke and Naruto with his black rods. Jigen resolved to seal Naruto and move to kill Sasuke, though was hindered by Naruto's shadow clones. Despite Sasuke's protests, Naruto convinced him to return to Konoha so he can live to fight another day. As Jigen was about to land a finishing blow, a heavily injured Sasuke teleported to Sakura's side, praying that Naruto would survive his entrapment before he passed out. Sasuke, still unconscious, was taken to a hospital where Sakura proceeded to heal him and managed to pull him out of critical condition. After Sasuke recovered, he learned that Kawaki used Boruto and Kawaki's Kama to go to the separate dimension and managed to save Naruto. When they returned and were treated in the hospital, Sasuke questioned his daughter about the events. Sarada explained to her parents how during their battle against Boro, it was only thanks to a strange new evolution of Boruto's Kama that they were able to defeat him. She noted that Boruto not only sprouted a horn and manifested a Byakugan in his right eye, with his massive increase in power, but was even acting differently. This concerned Sasuke, but Sakura told her daughter to rest, which the father agreed. Afterwards, Mitsuki decided to talk with Sasuke privately. He noted that Kara had taken a special interest in Boruto, calling him Momoshiki's vessel. Sasuke concluded that Momoshiki used Boruto as a means to preserve himself and potentially resurrect himself in Boruto's body. He also concluded that Kawaki is facing the same ordeal with Ishiki Otsutsuki. Shortly thereafter, Amado, the head of Kara's research and development division, arrived at Konoha and negotiated the terms of his defection. Sasuke was present during Amado's interrogation, where he learned that the scientist was responsible for providing Konoha with the coordinates to Jigen's dimension. After learning additional information about the Otsutsuki clan's history and practices, Sasuke deduced that the enigmatic clan leader is ultimately the one who gave Jigen his karma. 
Amato's glasses then began beeping, revealing a holographic projection of Jigen talking with Koji Kashin. They learned that Koji and Amato were working together so that Koji could kill Jigen. As they watched the fight, Amato continued divulging intel on Jigen, the Otsutsuki, and Kama. Sasuke noticed an inconsistency in Amato's explanation over the mechanics of Kama, noticing that Jigen still bore his despite having been taken over by Ishiki already. Acknowledging his point, Amato explained the unorthodox manner of Ishiki's parasitic takeover of Jigen. Sasuke listened on as Amato claimed that despite being able to transcend death with Kama, he could teach them how to kill Otsutsuki. Upon witnessing Koji's flames engulfing Jigen's body, Naruto wondered if Ishiki's end was near, though Sasuke pointed out that Ishiki still had two vessels marked with Kama, indicating that he could reincarnate twice. Sasuke voiced his concern that killing Jigen would make Kawaki Ishiki's sole remaining vessel, prompting Shikamaru to wonder if the entire thing was a setup from the start. Kawaki entered the interrogation room and attacked Amato, but was blocked by Sasuke's sword. Amato assured everyone that it was a misunderstanding and to turn their attention back to the battle. When Jigen's death triggered Ishiki's resurrection in his body, Amato explained this also erased Kawaki's Kama to avoid duplicates, leading Sasuke to realize that without any remaining Kama, Ishiki was vulnerable to permanent death. After Amato was officially made a citizen of Konohagakure, he explained that Ishiki's resurrection was unstable and would seek out Kawaki again to rebrand him. He also insisted that the village be evacuated and Kawaki be with Sasuke and Naruto at all times. As Boruto insisted to fight alongside his father and mentor against him, Sasuke made it clear to his student that fighting such a foe would likely result in death. Before they could settle the argument, they were alerted that Ishiki had arrived in the village. As Naruto ordered Boruto to join the evacuation, Sasuke stayed behind to talk with him. He revealed his knowledge of Boruto recently being taken over by Momoshiki's Kama. Boruto admitted he was less afraid of dying than hurting people should Momoshiki take control of him. But Sasuke swore as his teacher to stop Boruto by any means necessary. He then gave Boruto his precious old Genin forehead protector, making Boruto swear to return it in the end. Arriving to the battlefield and saving Naruto from Ishiki's attack, Sasuke began indiscriminately launching shuriken at Ishiki, who proceeded to shrink them all. When Sasuke launched his sword at Ishiki, he was deceived as it was revealed to be Boruto, who activated Kama and teleported Ishiki and himself to a separate dimension. Sasuke and Naruto soon joined to help Boruto via his space-time ninjutsu. As the Konoha Nin faced down Ishiki, he grabbed Boruto, openly impressed with how far his Kama had progressed in such a short period. Sasuke suddenly swapped places with Boruto for a sneak attack, only for Ishiki to easily rebuff him. Ishiki decided the best way to get Kawaki was to present Sasuke and Naruto's corpses to the village. The fight resumed, with Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork managing to push Ishiki on the defense as he began shrinking all their attacks. However, Ishiki demonstrated a new technique, manifesting and manipulating massive black cubes that separated the duo. From there, Ishiki pinned down Sasuke and moved to kill him with his own sword, only for Boruto to jump in the way, causing him to hesitate. Boruto deduced Ishiki couldn't kill him. Boruto explained that previously, Boro noted that Boruto's wielding of a Kama would aid tremendously in Kara's plans, meaning that Boruto's life was invaluable to Ishiki. Sasuke told Boruto to run away as their best bet was to wait out Ishiki's remaining lifespan, only for Ishiki to knock Sasuke out with a hard kick. Upon awakening, Sasuke found a battered Boruto being defended by Naruto, who released another form with Kurama to take down Ishiki. Sasuke observed as Naruto pressured Ishiki and was surprised he could keep track of his shrunken rods, something even his Sharingan had trouble doing. He took Boruto to safer distance from the battle and noticed that Naruto's chakra eventually began to weaken. Ishiki then took advantage of Naruto's chakra connection to Kawaki through the latter's prosthetic arm. From this, he teleported Kawaki to them to rebrand the boy, much to Sasuke's concern. Did you enjoy our video? Make sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.